Let's go I'm ready check to go to Mr. Shoulder's house. house. Excellent. I feel the fresh air will do me well. Follow me. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Mrs. De Plancy. Mrs. De Plancy, this is Thomasina Bateman, a visitor to our parish. We've already had the pleasure of meeting, Father. Excellent. Miss Bateman, don't hesitate to try one of Mrs. De Plancy's wonderful cakes. Yes, I've heard about her famous Bakewell puddings. I'll be here all day, young lady. But remember, once they're gone, they're gone. True. Those little whelps have already gobbled up all the gingerbread. You are doing God's work, Mrs. DePlancy. <laughs> he smiles upon us, Father. Miss Bateman, if you'd like to follow me. What's in those Let's cakes? Let's talk of graves, of worms. And epitaphs. What? Make dust our paper, and with rainy eyes, write sorrow on the bosom of the earth. Let's choose executors and talk of wills. Shakespeare? Quite. Oh. Which play? Oh, okay. Uh. Um. What, which one was the one with the ghost? Uh... I'm gonna say... Hamlet. Hamlet? Magnificent guess, Miss Bateman. But I'm afraid that passage is from Richard II. Well, shit. Studying the work of the Bard is one of my favorite pastimes. Follow me. Sure. All right. Well, I, I didn't realize it was going to be a quiz on Shakespeare in this game. Now I'm going to get the bad ending. Behold, the vast expanse of God's creation. The moors extend as far as the mortal eye can see. Beautiful, is it not? I mean, it's okay. I think... I would be more impressed if, you know, there was a Starbucks there or, and then, you know, a, a, a nice restaurant and, you know, maybe like a place to get a massage and possibly a movie theater and you know, electricity, you, you know, burger place. Indeed, the moors are beautiful. The beauty of God's creation is that it takes so many forms. How can one take in such a view and not have faith? Some look at these moors and think this a godless land. But I tell you, he is found in all domains. The Lord's work is all about us. Tell me, Miss Bateman, do you believe in God? I was brought up Anglican. The church was an important part of my early life, Father Roach. But what happened to my father eventually made me question things. If you don't mind me asking, my child, what happened to your father? He had an accident when I was very young. Flashback, 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 flashback. Come along now, Thomasina. Let's get out of the rain. Remember what I told you, all right? Be a good girl. People are unwell here. They don't want to hear you running about making noise. Understood? Yes, Mother. Good. And don't annoy the nurses. I promise I won't. Good. Now, let's see your father. Let's say she's like seven here. 
So she's like 37 now? I thought she was younger than that. Oh no, is that daddy? See, what happened was our daddy, 30 years ago, didn't realize that the Horror Month t-shirt was only available until October 15th. And he forgot to get his order in on time. And he missed out. And his heart broke. Knowing that he missed out on the Horror Month t-shirt available at dancegaming.store. Don't be like hit our daddy. Make sure you get your order in for the Horror Month t-shirt or hoodie at dancegaming.store at the link below the channel. Don't miss out. And don't get a broken heart. Daddy is sleeping. He's not. It's... Mommy, are you okay? Mommy is crying. Mommy? Mommy? Good evening, Mr. Bateman. Hello, little one. You must be Thomasina? Y yes. My name is Nurse Blaketon. I just need to talk to your mummy for a little bit. I'm sorry to disturb you, Mrs. Bateman. Mrs. Bateman? Will he ever talk again, Nurse Blaketon? The doctor is uncertain, Mrs. Bateman. There is the possibility that Mr. Bateman won't regain any movement at all. But we will do our utmost to look after Mr. Bateman here at Ticehurst, ma'am. He will have a nurse by his side at all times, I can assure you. What sort of god would allow this fate to befall such a kind and honest man? I'm sorry to hear this. God moves in mysterious ways. But he loves That's us. That's always all. the answer. They always mm. pull that one out. <laughs> Come along now. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> she scampered off in a hurry. Who was that? Some primitive folk make their home out on the moors. I suggest you keep your wits about you when you are exploring. And don't stray too far from Bewley. I see. How much farther to Mr. Shoulder's house? Still quite a walk, I'm afraid. But we'll get to him soon enough. Now then, take a look at this. Ooh. Legend has it that this cairn has stood here for over a thousand years. A long time. How remarkable. The Devil's Toe. I beg your pardon? What? That's what it's called. The Devil's Toe. Oh, I see. Come now. Onward. Why would it be the Devil's Toe? We walked and walked across that vast, featureless landscape. All the while, Father Roach was whistling away merrily. Just as I had begun to wonder if we were hopelessly lost, a building emerged from the mist. Mr. Shoulder's cottage. Chicken. Here we are, Miss Bateman. Unless my memory fails me completely, this is Mr. Leonard Shoulder's house. Thank you for your help, Father Roach. Now, now. No need to thank me after your providential assistance today. However, I have something to ask you. Yes? Please don't tell Mrs. Deplancy about my little scene in the woods. She will only fret. The poor dear woman has enough on her mind as it is. I shan't mention it. Thank you. You'd better see if Mr. Shoulder is in. I shall. Thank you, Zipton, for ordering a Hormon t-shirt. It says, thank you so much, Dan, for a Horror Month again this year. It's become a yearly tradition for me, and I appreciate it so much. And then Holodarn ordered uh, a shirt as well and says, Horror Month makes every October great since 2015. Well, thank you very much. Mr. Shoulder? Mr. Shoulder? Is Thomasina Bateman here? I'm here in Bewley as discussed. 
Maybe try again. His hearing probably isn't the best at his age. Hmm. A sweet little hen, plump and well groomed. Here, chuk chuk chuk. <laughs> Don't encourage them. <laughs> A fearsome looking beast. Rooster. He looks much too unruly to be picked up. A sweet little hen. <laughs> Care to hold one, Father Roach? Put that thing down, would you? Why are you You're picking no up fun. the chicken? Why? Why would you? What would be the point of that? That glove Wait a minute. looks familiar. His glove. I wonder if it matches the glove I found behind the plow and furrow. That was Mr. The gloves are a pair. Does this mean Mr. Shoulder was in the alley last night? Yeah. Why didn't he come inside to see me? A woolen undergarment. L. Slightly damp. I have a similar one myself. So very warm. The trousers feel damp, freshly hung, or still wet from last night's rain. Hmm. A pair of thick woolen trousers. Wood. Mr. Shoulder has stacked blocks of wood neatly beneath this small lean-to. Very neat and tidy. Hmm, true. What is that carved stone? The carved there? stone has been affixed to the door. I think it depicts a crescent moon. Father, what do you make of this? A peculiar adornment. I've not seen any like this in Bewley. Though it does remind me of a passage by the Bard himself. <clears throat> oh, it here we go. the very error of the moon. She comes nearer Earth than she was wont, and makes men mad. Um... Romeo and Juliet. A fine tragedy. But that particular passage is from the great Othello. Oh, of and course. your knowledge of the bard is somewhat lacking. It's been a while since I've read his work, father. Never mind. <laughs> I don't know, Shakespeare. I'm sorry. Okay, bad ending number two. No sign of life. Should we creep in the window? None. The window is nice and clean. The dwelling is by no means abandoned. No sign of any. Hmm. Try the door once more. Mr. Shoulder, are you home? Mr. Shoulder. It appears Mr. Shoulder is not at home. Where the hell could he be? Curses. Perhaps you could try the handle. It's locked. Perhaps he's gone for a stroll. Possibly. I'd suggest you call back later, my child. I myself must make my way back home. I have some matters to attend to at the church. Shall I accompany you back to Bewley? Nah. No, you go ahead, Father. Thank you. As you wish. Farewell, Miss Bateman. I hope Mr. Shoulder finds his way to you. Thank you for your help, Father Roach. My pleasure. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Uh, try entering his back door? You don't enter a man's back door without permission. Thank you. Much ado about nothing? Oh dear. I thought that was an easy one. Well, Romeo shit! And Juliet. Of course. That I shall say good night till it be <laughs> morrow. Lord be with you. I got I got an achievement well, for getting Shoulder, none of them right. Yes. I'll just have to find Hobbs Barrow myself. <laughs> I got the you got no answers correct achievement. We're getting the super bad ending, like everyone's dead. You're dead, I'm dead, chat's dead, everyone, everyone's dead. Hmm. Where would, if I was a crazy old man deep in the English countryside in 
probably a couple centuries ago. Where would I go? Hmm. Maybe take the moon thing? A carved stone has been affixed to the door. I think it depicts... It's bolted onto the door itself. I can't remove it. Hmm. Can we steal it? What if I use the trowel on it? That is not coming off. Hmm. I think this might be genuine sterling silver. Well, let's see if we can find him. As I trudged back to Bewley across those cold moors, I made a new resolution. 4K. I would find Hobbs Barrow myself, with or without Mr. Shoulder. Well, we're gonna the have train. That must be Kenneth. Oh, hi, train. At the station. Uh, ma'am, is uh, this your necklace? Excuse me. I found this necklace inside the church. Is it yours? No, Pet. Perhaps someone left it behind yesterday. You keep hold of it for now. I'll ask around at the next service. Are you sure? I trust you. <laughs> Mistakes were made, ma'am. I don't wish to give that away. Well, let's, um... Go back. Let's go to the hype train. Over this way. That creepy Where's man works Kenneth? the station. He was supposed to wait for me at the station. Mr. Tillett. Where did you go last night? Have we met? Last night at the Plough and Furrow. Oh, Miss Bateman. Are you serious? I was blind drunk last night and woke up with a stinking headache. You still smell like a brewery. I'm sorry. You went to use the lavatory and never came back, Mr. Tillett. I searched everywhere for you. I think I remember you bought me a drink. Then it's all a blur. I woke up on my bed this morning with my wife sour at me for waking her at some ungodly hour. What's creepy about Arthur? Let's just start with the first thing he does is he drunkenly says, why don't you give me a kiss? Like, already you're a creep. Like, that. you don't do that as someone you literally just met like a second ago. That's not cool. About last night, and then he mentions that he has a wife. So he was going to cheat on his wife with you. Like, and when he just met you. Like, what kind of a man is this? What were you going to tell me about Leonard Shoulder? Who? Leonard Shoulder. You told me you knew him. And promised to tell me more if I bought you a drink. Which I did. So what were you going to tell me? I, uh... Oh, I don't really know the old bugger. But you said you did. Oh, I... No, no, I, I know nought about him. No, nought about Leonard Shaw. I bought you a drink, you son of a... I bought him a drink, and he told me he was going to tell me about him, and he hasn't told me about him. That is making me mad. You're hiding something, Mr. Tillett. I don't believe you. I say a lot of things when I've got the drink in me. I probably just wanted you to buy me an ale. A likely story. Look, what would I gain from lying to you? I just wanted another drink. Even if that's the case, it doesn't explain your disappearance. Aye, I don't remember out. Hmm. That... Chat, let's type Dan Suss to him. He, this man is... All kinds of sus. He's lying about knowing this guy. 
He disappeared mysteriously in the bathroom after like an hour. Something's very, very sus with this guy. And I don't know what it is yet. It's something weird. About last night. You really don't remember where you went last night? As I say, it's all a blur. I remember needing a piss. Then... nothing. Oh, you must have missed me when I came out. I did not. I even went to the gents' toilets to find you. Oh, I have sight for sore eyes. It was. I checked everywhere, and you were nowhere to be found. The back door leading to the alleyway was blocked from the outside. Oh, I? Yes. You must have exited through that door, Mr. Tillett. But you just said it were blocked. There must be an explanation. Hmm. My mind has drawn a blank. Why was the door blocked? Did you block it? I told you I don't remember. I've no to say because I remember not. Hmm. Hmm. Again, you're just so sus. Is this live Dan or past Dan? Um, this game just came out, uh, I think a week or two ago. So it's brand new. Um, and past, do you think past Dan could do this? I don't think so. I found Mr. Shoulder's house, but he wasn't home. Don't worry. You'll find him. How's your headache faring? It feels like a steam engine is driving full pelt in a circle around me skull. Be sure to drink plenty of water, Mr. Tillett. Aye, aye. I'll survive. Hmm. So, you work here? Aye. Bewley Station Master at your service. Would you like to buy a ticket? Not just yet, thank you. I understand that some of the locals are not too happy about this new station. Aye. I'd go as far as saying the whole village. How long has the station been open for? About three months. We're on the Midland Railway Line. This employment's been a saviour for me. If I weren't stood here, I'd be drinking my life away at the pub right now. It's worth the occasional withering look from Cyril and the rest of them. Thank you very much to Speed Kills for the brand new Prime Gaming Sub! Woo! Thank you very much. And Service Victoria, Miss Klopek, um, thank you for those resubs. And then Sync New, thank you for ordering a horror t shirt that says, I get a shirt every year. Super glad to support you and happy to see how far you've come, Dan. Less than three. Well, thank you very much. What does a station master do? A bit of this and a bit of that. I don't wish to bore you with such things. As you wish. My responsibilities here keep me on the straight and narrow. I'll tell you that much. A sense of duty can do wonders for a lost soul. Indeed. This must be a rather lonesome post to occupy. Trains pass through here more regularly than you might think, lass. Scan the light, skip your yellow. Um, they, they queue up, so if multiple people have queued them up, it won't be right away. It'll be... A, as soon as it gets to it, each one lasts a minute. I'm looking for my assistant, Kenneth. Oh, aye. His train has arrived. Not a single soul disembarked the last train, Miss Bateman. Impossible. Was that not the midday train from London by way of Derby? Aye, it were. Mr. Price were here, unloaded a few crates. But no Kenneth. Not a soul. Hold on. One of them crates had your name on it, Miss Bateman. A great big one it were, with... A red ribbon. Aye. What is Kenneth playing at sending my equipment but not himself? Curses. Curses indeed. Where is my crate now? Mr. Price took away all the crates on his cart. Who? Mr. Price. He's the postmaster. Where can I find Mr. Price? He lives above the storeroom. Just north of the plow and furrow. You'll see it. There's a royal mail plaque on the wall. Thank you. Where can I find Mr. Price? He lives above the storeroom, just north of the plow and furrow. You'll see it. Thank you. What can you tell me about Lord Panswick? Oh, you've heard of his lordship then? Yes. Do you know him? Aye. He comes into the village from time to time, gives sweets to the children. Hires young men to work his land. He's well-liked around here. 
I sense some hesitation, Mr. Tillett. Well, we kind of have an unspoken agreement with his lordship. He looks after us, provided we leave him alone. I don't follow. He likes his privacy. Some people do. No one is allowed to visit him. Do you mean to say that he's a bit eccentric? No. I've heard people got fired at when approaching his manor uninvited. They get shot at. Grief. Mm. But is this true? Well, I won't be the one to find out. Where can I find Mr. Price? He lives above the storeroom, just north of the plough and furrow. You'll see it. There's a royal mail plaque on the wall. Thank you. Oh, sorry. I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. Hmm. Hobbs Barrow. It's why Leonard Shoulder invited me to Bewley. He thought I might like to excavate it. Oh, I. I heard about a Hobbs Barrow somewhere out there. There's some old stories around it. What stories? Stories. I can't remember. Oh, you Mr. liar. Tillett, please. This is important. I'm awfully sorry, Miss Bateman. Come on. I try to remember. If he invited you here, then I'm sure Mr. Shoulder will tell you all about it. That's if I ever get to meet him. I'm sure you will. Farewell for now. Tara. They're being fair. The cat. The gray cat again. <laughs> and a crow. Oh, hi, Cyril. Good day to you, Cyril. I'll do, lass. What are you up to, Cyril? Keeping an eye on that bleeding railway station. That's what. Thankfully, no one got off the last train. Really hate that station, don't you? Oh, I curse Midland Railway for bringing their damn line through Bewley. This is our town, our land. Tis no place for outsiders. So you keep saying. Anyway... No more trains today. Almost time to celebrate with an ale, I think. I could do with one myself. You pay in? Uh, no. I found Mr. Shoulder's house today, but he wasn't home. Why the bleeding hell should I care, lass? What is your problem? I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. Do you know where it is? Mind your own business, lass. You really are quite helpful, aren't you? Bah. Goodbye. Ta lass. You're so weird. I can't think of anything else to talk about right now. Uh, what are we investigating? Um, for just joining us, we are in a... We are basically an archaeologist. And we go into barrows, which are like, you know, graves. And we excavate and try oh. to find out stuff about the, the remains of the people by digging through the graves. So we're trying to find this place called uh, Hobbs Barrow, but everyone here won't talk to us about it. They're all being tight-lipped and very, like, secretive, and they won't tell us anything about it. And then the guy that invited us here has been very mysterious, won't meet us, and is acting very strange. So we don't know why no one will talk to us about what the hell's going on with this barrow. Good day. Yes. What can you tell me of Lord Panswick? His lordship commands much respect around here, lass. Keeps me busy with work. Why do you ask? Just curious. Are you sure you don't know where Hobbs Barrow is? Sorry, lass. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. Uh, by the way, I've removed the cue on the lights, so now they'll, they'll go off instantly. And if someone can override your lights with their lights. We'll see how that goes. I have nothing else to ask for the time being. <laughs> hmm. Good day. Hello. Goodbye. Bye, miss. Hmm. I don't think anyone is home. A small plaque beside the door reads Vicarage. <sighs> Vicarage, huh? Hmm. No one's there. No one here. <laughs> uh, let's go into here. Everyone's gone.
I have a feeling that the lights program is gonna break. <laughs> it's like. Should have not have said that. I know. <laughs> Oops. Feel like I'm in a rave right now. <laughs> the, the the lights are like I can't type figure out how to change it. People will eventually run out of points. Don't worry. It's a good way to drain people of their points. Hmm. Where what? Well, you have 90,000? All right, well, you keep doing it. Eventually, they will go away. Um, what does that plaque say again? I can't remove the Hmm, no. That won't work. Let's see. Oh, I have an I have a clever idea. I have an idea of how to stop the spam. Clever. Let's see. I think this will work. Da, 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 da. No, I must rave. Okay, that should, there, that should, um, hopefully, lower down people from spamming. There we go. Okay, now every person can only redeem each color up to three times. And then, boom, then you're locked out. Uh, people can do it a lot, but not spam it quite so much. Only three times now. All right. Let's see. I think my head's starting to hurt from all this light. The lights changing. Everything's like ah, ah. Each each stream, you can do it three times for each color. Each color three times. A lot. Are you sure you don't know anything about Hobbs Barrow? I would very much like to find it. No. Goodbye. The road disappears over the horizon. I see mm. nothing but moorland. All right, let's go back. I know it's like, ah, uh, my head's hurting. I have to turn the cue back on. Where, where do they say the uh, the post office was again? My brain shut off. I heard it like three times too. I have nothing. North of the pub. Oh, that I house don't. back there. 
Goodbye. I'm this. Oh, here we go. Maybe this creepy that guy. That must be the postmaster's storeroom. Hello. Hello. Good day. I haven't seen you in Bewley before. I'm just visiting. Lovely. It's nice to see a new face. We don't get many visitors. My name's Henry. Henry Long. Nice to meet you, Henry. Thomasina Bateman. Wonderful. What a treat. You seem in a good mood, Mr. Long. It's just lovely to see a new face. Where are you from, Miss Bateman? Oh, yes. Originally, a small town on the outskirts of Derby, Mr. Long. Though I currently Mr. reside Long. in London. London. I've never met anyone from London. How very exciting. Have you lived there a long time? It's been quite a few years now, yes. I've heard that the air there is so heavy with smoke, it makes it hard to breathe. Is that true? Some days. Oh, you must miss the fresh northern air. That's true. Well, Still you've that got way that today. Infinitely. No factories out here. Such things are a blight on his creation. I were born in this very home I stand in front of. Bewley is in my blood. Why would I ever want to leave? Especially now I can meet new folk thanks to the railway line. <laughs> I'm looking for Mr. Price, the postmaster. Oh, Mr. <laughs> Price, my lovely neighbor. I'm afraid you've just missed him. Curses. I saw him wheel a large crate into his storeroom just there. It must be mine. I really need it. Have a look through the window to see if it's yours. Where did Mr. Price go? I don't know. The man were in a hurry. I know he has family in Bakewell. That's miles away. Did he leave by foot? No, by horse. He must be a few miles down the road by now. Curses. Curses? When will Mr. Price be back? He didn't say. Could be tonight. Could be a few days. How infuriating. I told him I'd keep watch of his storeroom. And I'm a man of my word, Miss Bateman. I shall not budge from this spot. Well, I'm going to have to break in there to get my box. Okay, I had to turn the cue back on because the lights constantly switching was giving me a headache. <laughs> my, my eyes were like, oh, God. Ah. Ah. So now I gotta queue up again, but whew, my eyes are like, oh god, the lights kept switching and like, no. This is why you give chat a little bit of freedom, and then chat's like, ha, 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 let's break it. Death. Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? Aye, funny old fellow. I hear he lives way out on the moor somewhere. Have you seen him recently? <laughs> no, not for a long while now that you mention it. Why do you ask? It's a long story, but I was to meet him in Bewley. He invited me here. Well, I must thank him when I see him for inviting such an enchanting young woman. What? You flatter me, Mr. Long. Sir? Sir? Why do they call you Mr. Long? I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. One of those old burial hills? Yes. Do you know where it is? Believe it or not, I haven't set foot on the moor since I were a child. Why is that? I've got all I need right here in Bewley. And we're all truly blessed with the railway station, which brings us lovely new faces. Watch it be he just has a really long mole on his back. It's like that long, just hangs out. But, ugh. Your opinion of the railway station differs widely from your fellow townsfolk, Mr. Long. I've not met anyone particularly keen on it. That railway line is the start of a new era for Bewley. Mark my words, there's much to protect here, but we need new blood. I hope that some of you visitors will actually stay here permanently. Why is that? So I have new friends to talk to. Ah. <laughs> some people here don't want any new friends. True. Cyril Farnaby, the miserable old sod, is the worst offender. I've had the pleasure of meeting Cyril. He really dislikes the railway station. Absolutely miserable he is. I've tried to convince him many times that the station will help Bewley. He just doesn't understand. I met him last night in the plough and furrow. Aye, the scene of our many debates. Blimey, 
I could go for an ale right now, actually. I could, too. Can I buy you a drink? Really? No. Wait. <laughs> Do you think Mr. Kemp will let me open a tap? Perhaps. You could always ask him. Hmm. I shouldn't leave anyway. Mr. Price is relying on me to keep watch of his storeroom. Goodbye. Don't be a stranger. I'll try not to be. Royal Mail, Postmaster's residence. Hmm. This must be the local post office. There's a pub near me called the Plow and Furrow. What does furrow mean? Is that like a like a common term? What is it like? What does furrow stand for usually? Does it mean something? It's the rows of dirt in a field. Oh, so like the the plow makes the furrows. Okay. The postmaster isn't home. If you're looking to collect your post, you'll have to wait until he gets back. You son of a... Oh, I can travel. Oh, M lets me go wherever I want. That's nice. Let me try Mr. Shoulder again. Are you home yet? I've come a long way to meet you, Mr. Shoulder. Please open the door. Please. Break the window. That's a peculiar idea. What? Break the window. I don't wish to beat my way in. Why? You're no fun. Burn the house down. Hmm. No, that won't work. Nope. Maybe grab the chicken. You're a sweet little thing, aren't you? Put the chicken through the window. Say that the chicken broke in and that you were just trying to save his property. It's a perfect plan. I've got to distract this guy so I get my damn post. What if we dug up the grave here? I may be a barrow digger, but I am no grave robber. I could. Ma'am, you are a grave robber. I mean, let's be honest. You just are. And that's okay. Just R. It's locked. Locked door. Hmm. The chicken did it, yes. Hello, child. Pardon? Him. Is Myrtle one of your dolls? Yes, my favorite. Mummy made her for me. She's so beautiful. Wally is the worst brother in the whole world. Freaking thief. I had a feeling he was so rude. Why did your brother take Myrtle away? He's just jealous because Daddy is letting me come with him to the market tomorrow. Wally thinks I'm Daddy's favorite, so he took Myrtle from me. What if he rips her to tatters? What if he feeds her to Mr. Bryden's goat? Don't worry, Jane. I'm sure he wouldn't do such a thing. Where did your brother go? I don't know. Home, maybe. But I have to wait here for Myrtle's friends to dry out. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? I... I have, yes. You <gasps> have? What? We aren't supposed to talk about it. Why not? Would you like to go there? Yes, yes. I yes. would very much like to. Yes. I'll tell you where it is if you find Myrtle for me. You will? Yes. But don't tell anyone about it or I'll be told off. I promise. Please find Myrtle first. I miss her. I will. All right, little girl. Sure. Where do you live? 
Our home is on the other side of the village, miss. Maybe Wally went back there. Or maybe he's left her out on the moors. Poor Myrtle. I'm going to kick him so hard. Goodbye. Hmm. So that child stole the damn doll. We have to get it back. And then we'll finally get to find this damn burrow. Good day. Hello, man. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Oop, right. Kick the child. I should. Ah, I didn't mean to click that. All right, you little piece of crap. Where's the doll? Good day. Jane tells me you've taken Myrtle away. And what if I did? That's a bit mean, don't you think? She kicked me! Look at this bruise on my leg! That does look quite bad. Well, that is rude. Why did she kick you? Because she's a little goblin. You don't oh. know what she can be like. Oh. Besides, Myrtle is gone now. I've given her to the fair folk. That'll teach her. The Fair folk? Who are the fair folk? The little people of the moors. I gave Myrtle to them. Little people? You don't mean fairies, do you? We call them fair folk round here. Wally, there is no such thing as fairies. It's two, and I gave them a doll. Astorius Naughty Drums, thank you for those resubs. And Cyberda, thank you for the brand new follow. Welcome to our channel. Where can I find these fair folk? Follow the tinker of their tiny belts. I hear them when the wind dies. They dance around their little house. But where is this little house? Just listen for the bells. You'll find it. <sighs> Don't think about bringing that door back. That will just bring bad luck for all of us. Goodbye. Hmm. So I have to go find... Well, I did see a fairy circle, so maybe that's where they are. The circle of mushrooms. I have nothing else. Well, I guess we will try. Not here. It was a little further up. Nope, not that way. I think it was more to the east, probably. No, I think it was over here. Right down this path. I'd better not touch them. They could be poisonous. It looks like something has been buried in the middle. Mm-hmm. Don't do it. Don't fuck with fairies. Dead eyes. Thomasina, please stop leaving your toys lying about the place. What happened the last time you left your dolly under the tree? A fox ate it, madame. Yes, it did. Fetch it now, won't you? Then I'll fix your supper. Yes, madame. Yes, madame. What's for supper, madame? It'll be nothing but a glass of water and a worm if you don't fetch your dolly right this instant. You can't feed me that. It's the gateway to the fairy kingdom. Hello, fairies. Well, there's my doll. There you are, Josephine. I won't let the foxes eat you. Who's that you have there, little bird? Josephine. Daddy! She introduced me to the fairies. Oh, fairies, you say? Yes, Daddy. Do you believe in fairies? Of course. Do you see those mushrooms over there? Yes. That's the gateway to their kingdom. That's where Josephine and I go to talk to the fairies. Now, listen to me, Thomasina. Yes? You're old enough now to hear this. There's no such thing as fairies or talking dolls, my little bird. What? What do you mean? I'm sorry, my dear child. I do not wish to upset you. I just want to make sure that you understand the difference between fantasy and reality. Josephine is just a doll, and fairies do not exist. Wow. Daddy? 
Science is the great antidote to the poison of enthusiasm and superstition. Please always remember that. If you hear anything about fairies or the like again, know that it's hogwash. What is it? Dan I, Dan I too. Hogwash. Did Wally bury the doll, I wonder? Um, that's a creepy doll. This must be doll. Jane's ragdoll. Hmm, you're coming with me, little fellow. I shall name you Kenneth. You're gonna take the worm? I've already taken one. Look at it writhing away. Bunch of worms. Perhaps these wriggling worms are the fair folk young Wally was so fearful of. How strange. There is a hairpin pierced through the arm. This may come in handy. I'll keep it. Ma'am. At least I shall not return from Bewley empty handed. She just pissed off the fairy kingdom. She's in big trouble, Jet. You don't mess with fairies. They get. Like, think of Tinkerbell. They get real pissed. Really pissed. If you mess with their stuff. A uh, little girl was to the north over here. There's nothing. I have nothing. So let's go to the north and talk to the little girl again. Here's your doll. I present to you Myrtle. Myrtle! Myrtle! I missed you so much. Now, I believe we had a deal. Yes, we Hide did. Come back. Wait. Hide and seek. It's in moments like these I thank myself for not having children. Ah. Uh. Hey. I got jabated. Little girl. I wonder where she could be. You know what? I'm gonna gas her out. <laughs> Jane, get out of there. Don't make me come in. Fine. FX44, thank you for subbing with Prime Gaming. Curses. The hole is too small for me to fit through. <laughs> I've never had that problem. Maybe widen the hole? I was always happiest with a trowel in my hand. Uncovering hidden worlds within the earth itself. Clod by clod. That should do it. That hole is quite, quite wider now. <laughs> Jane. It's a big ass hole. Jane, come out this instant. Uh oh. I can't see a damned thing in here. I need a light source. I don't like this. This is not cool. Curses. The useless thing blew out. I need that. Let me go back and grab a candle from the, uh... <laughs> I'll be right back, man. I gotta get a candle. What if we find out that the daughter actually died ten years ago? And it's the ghost of a small child. Let me grab uh, the ca oh. The candle has melted. It's not much use anymore. 
Perhaps Mr. Kemp will replace it this evening. Well, I will need a different light source then. Could I have a candle, Mr. Stanley Kemp? I'm sorry to ask this, Mr. Kemp, but could I please open a tab? Still not in your purse? I'm afraid not. My assistant hasn't arrived as planned, so I find myself in a bind. He must have put the money in my crate, which is currently being held in Mr. Price's storeroom. Well, as you know, I run an honest establishment here, and I do trust you. So yes, I'll open an account for you, to be settled at the end of your stay. Of course. Yay. Thank you, Mr. Kemp. Now then, I'll be needing something of value as a deposit. I thought you said you trusted me. Aye. It's not personal, lass. One can never be too cautious. Y you don't... You want collateral because you don't trust me? Okay. I found Mr. Shoulders home. Thanks to the help of Father Roach. Wonderful. So you've met our vicar then? Yes, I did. An interesting character. Indeed. So, did old Leonard apologize for his absence? Not quite. He wasn't home. What is that man playing at? You tell me. I've decided to find Hobbs Barrow without Mr. Shoulder's aid. Are you sure that's a wise idea, lass? What other choice do I have? I have a feeling he is avoiding me. Do you know where I can find the Barrow? No, sorry. I say that on my mother's grave, Miss Bateman. My assistant has not arrived as planned. Oh, is everything all right? I'm not entirely sure. Am I to keep a room for him just in case? If you could hold it for one more night, Mr. Kemp. As you wish. It's weird he didn't show up. Everyone keeps, like, disappearing. Give him the girl? No, I'm, I'm just going to give him the necklace I stole, right? That'd be fine. What can you tell me about Lord Panswick? A most charming man, Miss Bateman. He looks after us here, a good fellow. Where does he live? Panswick Manor, on the moors. No visitors allowed. His lordship likes his privacy. How can I open a tab again? Leave me an item of value as a deposit. I'll give it back to you at the end of your stay, when it will be time to pay the piper. That was Goodbye. ominous. Uh, a hairpin. Oh, there's a to-do list. Open a tab, find Jane. I have to find a light source. Let's see. I, I must say, last night has rather put me off using these toilets. Sir, would you like a worm? Mr. Kemp would think me a fool. <laughs> would you like a worm? Would that work, sir? Well, the silver cross, unfortunately, isn't mine. I don't want to wait. Is this yours? Oh, that's beautiful. I'd never be allowed such a pretty thing. Um. How about you? Is this yours? What do you think? Hello. I really must find Hobbs Barrow. What did I tell you last time? Not to be found digging around in those things. Goodbye. The old woman let me hold on to it while I uh, find while she finds the owner. If suddenly she finds the owner, I don't have it anymore. That's not going to be a good sign. <laughs> the town will never trust me again. The road disappeared. So I guess this is now mine. I can't, I can't think of anything else to talk about. Hmm. Who would have an expensive silver necklace? Hello. What do you know about Lord Panswick? Not a lot. I know he's in charge around here. Does he come to the village often? Not really. He has a manor out on the moors. 
Have you ever been there? Evans, no. Villages aren't allowed there. Why not? I don't know. It's just the way it is. Hmm. Are you sure you know nothing of Hobbs Barrow? I really must find it. I'm sure. Goodbye. Bye, man. You're a liar. He's a liar. She's a liar. Everyone's a liar in this town. Is this yours? No, not mine. Let me try the old man. I'm not sure they would be interested. Is this yours? Is this yours? I don't wear out fancy like that. Farewell for now. Tara. Where can I find Mr. Price? He lives above the storeroom. Just north of you'll see it. Thank you. Farewell for Tara. Well, I can't do anything there. I don't want to put it on the collateral in case I'm going to need it later, but eh. Good morning to you. Hello, Mar044. Well. Let's ask this guy first. Is this yours? No, not mine. There's nothing else I wish. I'm not sure they would. Hmm. Hairpin. A sharp hairpin. Could be useful. That's a peculiar idea. I could maybe pick his lock at Mr. Shoulder's cottage. Hmm. I can't pick this type of lock with a hairpin. Hmm. Still not here. Try the devil's toe again. No. St. Edmund's Church. Hello. Good day. Hmm. Father Roach asked me not to discuss that with Mrs. DePlancy. Well, I won't. Are you sure you don't know where Fine. Hobbs Barrow is? Hobbs what? Never mind. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. Lord be with you. Try the question mark? I don't think I can. Hobbs Barrow? Well, I can't think of anything else to do other than get a tab and hopefully get a lantern or something. We gave the cross to the woman. She said it wasn't hers. And we should hold on to it until she could find the owner. I can't take the sign, nor... The sign is in a shabby state, but the shop appears to be a cobbler's... Shoe shop? Okay. I probably shouldn't. Okay, I'll do the Will cross. Will you accept this silver cross pendant as a deposit? Can I take a closer look at it? Aye, silver. That'll do. Thank you, Mr. Kemp. Can I get you something to drink? Uh... No. Not right now, Mr. Kemp. As you were. I won't get drunk just yet. I can't think of anything. I don't know where I'm going to get a light, a light source. Hmm. To do. Locate house bear, explore Bowerly, find a way to the postmaster room, find Jane. Hmm. 
Amazon's offering four months free for Prime members today on their official website. Well, that's awesome. Oh, Prime Music. Okay, I was like, four months of pri free Prime. That's amazing. Where have I seen? Ooh. Let me see if I get a drink. If it's a drink right away, if it goes to my inventory. Because that could be the difference. I have not. There's not. It's Miss. He has. It's Mr. He has. He has. He has. Plate painting, menu painting. I've no use for ashes. Stanley is yet to set the. F he won't let me talk to him. Let me look in the door window. There's my crate. Sitting right Kenneth there. Kenneth always ties a red ribbon to it. I can see an envelope tucked behind the ribbon. Perhaps it can help explain Kenneth's absence. I'm going to have to get in there. Well, sh I need to... This guy needs to let me in the damn place. The man is sta... He looks a little chirpier than your average Bewley Red. Do you want a worm? I don't think anyone... the wrong type of lock for this to work. It's the wrong type. Something must be locked somewhere. Maybe I have a lamp in my belongings, possibly? Give the worm to the earliest bird you see. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Because the early bird gets the worm. Oh, that man. Good day, sir. A fine exemplar of inebriation. I've stored my case in there. A box within a box. Jammed shut. The wood must have warped over the years. The drawers don't open. I can't store anything in. Hmm. I've hung my dress inside. Aside from that, Nothing. So we need we need to find a way to I don't wish to take it. A decorative plate. This one depicts a bull. Nah. The candlestick was was already burnt, unfortunately. I couldn't use the match. Guess we'll talk to everyone in town. Someone's gonna have an answer. I, yes. What do you know about Lord Panswick? He gave me some sweets once. <laughs> My friend says that Lord Panswick has special trees at his manor that grow sweets on their branches. Do you think that's true, miss? I think that's very unlikely. Me too. Unless he's a witch. Are you sure you know nothing of Hobbs Barrow? Not like a wheelbarrow. Never mind. Goodbye. Goodbye, miss. <sighs> Let me talk to the blacksmith. Wait, there's a lantern there. I have one there. just like this. I have one just like this. Where? I have nothing else to ask for the time being. A fantastic specimen. Alas, it is. Good day. Yes. Mr. Crozier, might I borrow your lantern? Oh! Sorry, lass. I need it. My eyesight is not what it used to be. Oh, come on. The extra light helps me see what I'm hammering. It's daytime! I understand. I noticed your spectacular fossil specimen. Oh, I. I collect them. This one is called an. Ammonite. I'm impressed, lass. 
from the Jurassic period adventure. Do you collect them too, then? My true interests lie in comparatively oh. modern history. Oh, why? Well, I do love a fossil. It's important to remember that we all end up in the soil eventually. Quite. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. He collects fossils, huh? What if we were to trade him a fresh fossil? The trowel is too blunt to chip away at the rock. How about the hairpin? The hairpin isn't strong enough to remove the fossil. Damn it, more issues! <laughs> they aren't mine to take. Sweet little flowers. The delicate flowers smell rather sweet. She won't open her box for some reason. They're pro I probably have more in that box. So I have to figure out how to how to get past. Find a way into the postmaster's storeroom. This damn man will not get away from the storeroom. Is there some way around the back? Hello. Good day. Can I buy you a drink, Henry? <gasps> there really? we go. Really? We can talk more at the inn. But I told Mr. Price I'd keep watch of his storeroom. Doors have locks for this very reason. You're right. One drink won't take long. Let's make it I ten. I shall take you up on your offer, Miss Bateman. Let us make our way. The rocket weren't Stevenson's only design, you know. Before that, there were the Blucher and the Locomotion. But my favourite would have to be the Lancashire Witch. I believe he built that in 1828. In Newcastle, of course. Well... That's me. I better be off. Wait. Ta-ra, Miss Bateman. Damn it. I couldn't even get a word in. He likes a good chin wag, our Henry. He certainly does. Can I get something stronger next time? Clearly, he must not be there anymore, right? You son of a bitch. Hello. Good day. Can I buy you another drink? I suppose one more ale won't hurt. Oh I shall my take god. You up on your offer, Miss Bateman. Let us make our way. Oh. <laughs> the rear wheels are powered by coupling rods. Would you believe the boiler had two flue tubes? Not two. So there were nothing like it. Well, that's me. I better be off. Wait. Ta ra, Miss Bateman. Oh my god. That's two drinks. Curses. I'm starting to feel somewhat tipsy. I'm here to excavate Hobbs Barrow, not Hobbs Barrels. Hobbs Barrels. Well, there must be... If we do it enough, he'll have to at least break the seat. Oh my god. Hello. Good day. Can I buy you another drink? I suppose one more ale won't hurt. I shall take you up on your own. Let us make. <laughs> Bugley is the latest of many additions to the Midland Railway line. Speaking of change, I hear the whole frontage of Derby Station is being rebuilt. Designed by an architect by the name of Tubshaw, if I remember correctly. Well, that's me. I better be off. Wait! Ta-ra, Miss Bateman. Mr. Long can really put away a drink. Thank goodness I've switched to water. Henry Long can talk, can't he? <laughs> He's a colourful character. The man drinks like a fish. 
He certainly does. I've seen him drink this place dry and still be up to tend his garden at sunrise. Oh, the no. The man can truly hold his ale. Goodbye. See you soon. Damn. <gasps> what? So he's a Dan Chad. Let's see if we can figure out a way to poison the barrels. Sturdy looking barrels. No doubt used to store ale. I can't see how that will help me. I need something that will make him sleepy. Mr. Kemp would... Hmm. So I need, so I need to put something in his ale so when he drinks it, he will get sleepy. What about a poisoned mushroom? Unfortunately, I don't think... I have nothing... I tried the worm, didn't work. Wait a minute. The the guy said he ate blackberries and got sick. Maybe we can find some. Lass, there's no Nope, there's no berries around here. It it does look like it's later in the day though. Maybe the guy is back at his house, Mr. Shoulder. Mr. Shoulder continues to prove himself elusive. Hmm. No sign of any movement. Let's give the chicken the worm. That would be rather cruel to the poor worm. Use the worm? Use the worm where? We tried using it on the ale, nothing happened. Bunny rabbit? Hmm. It's the crow eating the worms. Hmm. This is where I dug up Jane's ragdoll. This is where I dug. I already recovered the ragdoll. The more stre No. In memory of Romeo Hegg, dearly missed by his beloved Juliet. That's fake. Where is a simple Ah uh, Sasa, thank you for the brand new sub! Flowers have long since dried out. I don't want them. Well, I want them. They could be for a puzzle. There's nothing I can use in here. I've no time for some. This must be where the local vicar. He did the graves? No, she won't let me. We already tried that. I may be a barrow dig. Hmm. Nope. Uh. 
Running out of ideals. So I need to get him to fall asleep, but... What if we pick the lock on the pew? It's the wrong type of lock for this to work. Nope. So the bartender gave me a hint that the man can drink and drink and drink and drink There's and still be else. fine. So we need something to put in the drink to make it stronger so that he uh, passes out. I can't think of anything. Hello. Good day. Can I buy a some ice letter? It really is great to have someone new to talk to. I have so many more stories to share. Oh, I bet you well, do. Well, that's me. I better be off. Wait. Ta-ra, Miss Bateman. Mr. Long can really put a... Thank goodness I... Wait! Now you can't interact with this drink on the table. There's no interactions available. We can do it in the barrel in the back, but we tried the worm on the barrel in the back, nothing happened. So, I have to find something to put in the barrel to knock him out. I don't know what. Sweet little flowers. I'm not sure what that would. Hmm, dolls back. The poisoned flower. Well,. The flowers could kill the man. I'm gonna try maybe the gloves on the mushroom. I'm not sure what that. Nope. Here lies a. The bucket is rough. The bucket is. Hmm. Can't pick the lock on the church. We've already tried that. Hello. Goodbye. Sarah. You're gonna be no help. I suspect I suspect the barrels are empty. Otherwise the locals would be rolling them into their cellars. Sturdy looking barrels. Oh, so those are empty? That's not gonna be of any help then. I'd, ra I'd rather. Hmm. I have. Let's go. Have actually, let's let's go to the guy at the train station. Maybe he can help me. <sighs> Maybe he might have something a little stronger. I have nothing else to. Looks like no. Try finding someone that Henry doesn't like and invite them to have a drink. What?
I have to... Maybe Cyril? Good day to you, Cyril. I'll do, lass. What do you make of Henry Long? <laughs> An idiot who thinks that station's a good idea. Can you imagine? Strangers pouring into Bewley. Turns the stomach, that does. Maybe he has a point. You could travel. Ah, you're an outsider. I expect you to have such a bad opinion. But Henry, he's a Bewley lad. We've had the odd Barney or two in the pub over it all. I can imagine. Can I buy you a drink, Cyril? Now? Yes. Come on, then, lass. Follow me. All right, so we got to get him to fight with it. I never would have come up with that, ever. So then he turns around and says, why is a dog like a tree? And I says, I don't know. And he says, because they both lose their bark once they're dead. Those things. <laughs> Very droll, Cyril. Well, it's been a pleasure, but I must be off. Aye, lass. Tough for the drink. You're not too bad for an outsider. <laughs> Hello. Good day. Can I buy us a special lettuce? All right. Now we're to think, going. if that station hadn't been built, we would never have met. Blessed be the Midland Railway. Idiot! That station is the worst decision this village has ever made! Cyril Farnaby. A miserable man with miserable ideas. I will change your mind even if it kills me. Finally, progress. <laughs> Sometimes the, the the logic in adventure games is like, you want me to what with what? Kenneth taught me this useful trick. A hairpin is much more than a hair accessory. A few wiggles and this lock should spring right open. I've snapped the hairpin in the process, but I managed to unlock the door. Let's open this envelope. There's a note inside. Ms. Bateman, I beg for your forgiveness. A matter of grave urgency has arisen in London. I cannot join you in Bewey. I have packed you to use your equipment and, pro and pray you will find local assistance in my absence. Look forward to seeing you upon your return. Your faith with Kenneth Murdoch. I oh, know he's a Murdoch. Frustrating. I wonder what happened. I'd better get this to the alley before Mr. Long comes back. Moving a fully laden crate through the village square was no easy task. Somehow, no one was there to witness it. But I didn't give up, because I never give up, do I, Mother? I am as stubborn as my father, as you liked to remind me. That is so freaking big. Oh my god. Wait. Where is my money? It's not in here. Kenneth, you absolute liability of a man. It looks like everything else is in here. Picks, specimen trays, shovels. Oh, my chisel, I'll take that. Ah, oh, my lantern. It feels light. There mustn't be any oil inside. I'll leave the rest in the crate. Stanley assured me things would be safe here. No money and no assistant. This is most inconvenient. Still, I've been in worse situations. I've got a tab at the inn for now. I'll worry about money later. I must find that barrow and get on with the excavation. 
How are we gonna pay that tab, actually, though? That's gonna be sus. I don't wish to carry around my heavy excavation. Well, I have a chisel. So let me go grab the fossil, give it to the blacksmith. Maybe the blacksmith will give me some oil from his lamp. Hmm. That's m oh, other way. All right, chisel. Yeah, this game has been a very slow, slow, Splendid. slow start. I've managed to extract it in one piece. As I said, it probably would be very slow. I know next to nothing about this barrow still. What do you make of this ammonite? Now then, tis a beauty that it looks familiar. Good day. Yes. I was wondering if you might be able to spare some lantern oil. I don't have much to spare, lass. Paraffin is as rare as hen's teeth in these parts. How much coin do you have? None, I'm afraid. If you're in a bind, I can trade you a small amount. A trade, you say? Aye. What can I trade you for some lantern oil? Surprise me. Thanks for your time. Aye. So, so far, I've stolen the silver necklace. I've defaced the town fossil, stole it, trading it to this man. I broke into the post office to get my stuff. Would you trade some of your paraffin for this fossilized ammonite, oh. Mr. Crozier? Now then, tis a beauty that. It looks familiar. I'll take it off your hands. Wonderful. Let me fetch some paraffin from inside. There you are. Thank you, Mr. Crozier. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> now we can finally get inside that hole. My lantern is fueled and ready for action. Right, let's put this lantern to good use. <laughs> Fueled and ready for action in this dank, dark hole. Jane, come out at once. Jane. Jane. Badger! Goodness me! Now that's scary! <laughs> Jane! Silly, what are you doing in that smelly old badger's hole? You were in there. No, I weren't. Yes, you were. Not true. I was hiding behind that tree over there. I got bored of waiting for you. So where can I find Hobbs Barrow? Go north from the church. It was the fairies. The hill. You'll see some muddy fields on the horizon. That's Mr. Bryden's farm. Hobbs Barrow is there. Don't tell any grown-ups I told you. And thanks for getting Myrtle back. My pleasure. Thank you, Jane. You've been a great help. So the fairies in there made this sound to mimic her voice. Uh, where'd she say to go again? <laughs> bum, bum, bum. 
Yes. North of the graveyard? Okay. I, I agree. This entire town so far has been extremely sus. Children are sus. The adults are sus. Like, their stories are sus. The environment is sus. The fairies are sus. It's very damn sus. So everyone just type dance sus at them and tell them how sus this place is. As I trudged through the barren moors, with only the odd sheep for company, I reflected upon my visit to Bewley thus far. The enigmatic Mr. Shoulder and his puzzling disappearance. The townsfolk of Bewley, who had made it as difficult as they could for me to find Hobbs Barrow. The suspicion, the wariness in their eyes. Only now I know it was actually fear. In the end, it was the innocence of a child, young Jane, that condemned me to my fate. Uh oh. The gate opens out into a vast tilled field. What? What's the in the barrow? The entrance to the farmhouse. What do you want? My name is Thomasina Bateman. Mr. Bryden, I presume. Aye. What do you want, lass? I understand Hobbs Barrow is located on your land. Oh, well, yes. Why do you ask? I am an antiquarian, Mr. Bryden. I'm writing a volume on the Barrows of England. Oh, I suppose you'll be wanting to dig about it. If at all possible, Mr. Bryden. I was invited to Bewley by Mr. Leonard Shoulder, who told me such an excavation would be possible. Leonard Shoulder? <laughs> I haven't seen him in years. The last I heard he were on death's door. There's to be no more digging there, lass. Not since it went so badly last time. Went badly last time? Tell me about yourself, Mr. Bryden. I live here with my wife, and I might be long in tooth, but I can still run this farm without too much help. Was there a previous excavation of Hobbs Barrow? Aye. My brother dug it up. Must have been, what, 25 years ago? You see, whatever he found inside, well, it drove him mad. Oh? Aye. I moved back here to look after him. Poor bastard hanged himself not long after. I... I'm sorry, Mr. Bryden. That's terrible. Aye. Time passes, but it were an awful thing. Is this still Horror Month? Yes! Last until the end of the month. What did your brother find? Samuel. Samuel were his name. Sorry. What did Samuel find in the barrow? I don't know. But something went wrong. Afterward, he could barely speak. You couldn't make out a word like. That must have been hard. You lost a hand in that excavation too, you know. Goodness me, how? I try hard not to speculate on what might have happened, lass. I'd see him disappear into that barrow. Dragging timber him with him, you'd hear him hammering away for hours. I offered him help, but he'd have none of it. Soon enough, he blocked the entrance off. To look at it now, you'd never know the thing we dug up. The landers reclaimed it. Yeah, the voice acting of all the characters so far has been pretty damn good. Who else was involved in the excavation? Two others, I believe. Outsiders, perhaps. I can't say for sure. I think they left town pretty swiftly afterwards. I lived in Bakewell at the time. I only moved back here to look after Samuel. I took over the farm when he passed away. I see. What can you tell me about your farm? Samuel's fair to side. We're a fortunate family. The soil is fertile here. Crops grow without too much trouble. All the other farmers around here raise livestock, even Lord Panswick. We grow up feed for them. Most fortunate, Mr. Bryden. Is your wife home? She's out in the fields, lass. Pulling weeds. The curse of such fertile soil. <laughs> Forty years we've been married. I couldn't do it without her, you see. How splendid. Aye. My wife is a fine woman. Are you married, lass? No, no. I've had my fair share of proposals, Mr. Bryden, but that's not the life for me. Marriage is an important institution. You'll find a man one day. Hmm. I manage rather well without one, Mr. Bryden. 
You haven't seen Mr. Shoulder for some time? I hear about him now and then, but it must be a good few years since I set eyes on him. He hasn't been here to visit Hobbs Barrow? Not to my knowledge. I heard he's beset by ailments. Don't leave his home often. Hmm, how odd. I assumed he'd spoken to you about my visit. Not at all. So people haven't seen this man in years. What can you tell me of Lord Panswick? He keeps us going. Most of all crops go to feed his animals. What is he like? Oh, I've hardly laid eyes on him. He sends his workers here to pick up the crops. I see. You say Mr. Shoulder is at death's door. What exactly ails him? I'm unsure. It's just what I've heard. I wouldn't want to speculate on matters that are not my business. Mr. Bryden, may I please have your permission to excavate Hobbs Barrow? No. Have you not been listening, lass? It's the name Sammy of the game, sir. There that's best left to rot. No digging here, lass. Sir. The name of the game, it... Wouldn't you like to find out more about what Samuel found in there? Perhaps. But Samuel boarded up that barra for a reason. You don't want to tempt the same fate, lass. Perhaps I can at least see Hobbs Barrow. Hmm. I suppose you've come a long way to be here, lass. All the way from London, Mr. Bryden. Hmm. Have you any proof of all you've told me? Proof? You wish to see proof of what, Mr. Bryden? I can't let any Tom, Dick, or Harry wander around me fields. What proof have you of your claims? My name is not Tom, Dick, or Harry. Thanks for your time. ta -ra now. Yeah, what about the letter? Here is proof that Mr. Shoulder invited me to Bewley in order to excavate Hobbs Barrow. Leonard making bold promises, I see. Don't make me regret this, but yes. You can have a look at it. Thank you. Any road. Once you've set your eyes on it, you won't be wanting outdo with it. The place gives one a queer feeling. Hey! So where can I find it? Through that gate to your left. Just head straight across the top to the field there. After ten minutes or so, you'll see Barra. Set on a hill ahead. Thank you again, Mr. Bryden. I really Henry do Cavill does it. the same for me. I need to grab a drink, guys. We're back in just a few minutes. Be right back.
Oh, did they change? Uh. Oh, never mind. It's a. Uh... That is a different email. <laughs> All right. Uh, welcome back, guys. So I can see the barrow, but I'm not allowed to excavate it yet. Oh, it's a goat. What a wild looking thing. Hi, goat. Easy, girl. I'm not fond of goats at the best of times, but this one seems particularly disagreeable. Goats are nice. This is not mine to take. The empty bucket smells of rancid milk. Ew. Ew. Ugh. Hello there. Yes? That's quite an intimidating goat you own. <laughs> the old girl does a better job of protecting this farm than any hound would. <laughs> she still produces a lot of milk for us, so we forgive her temper. Thanks for your time. ta now. Huh? I probably should have brought my umbrella. Not bringing an umbrella to England is a, is dumb. It rains a lot there. Perhaps I could take a closer look. AR. AR. I haven't a clue what that could be referring to. Oh, I know what it is. Pirates. Arr. Finally, here it is. Hobbs Barrow. That's it. Indeed, a barrow of a most unusual rectangular form. I've not seen something like this since West Kennet Long Barrow. Yes, this shall make a fine looks like a hobbit hole. Book. What secrets do you conceal? I wonder. Smell earthy and sweet. <laughs> Three, two, one. You can open your eyes now, Thomasina. <laughs> Come. Are you ready for your first excavation? Yes, Daddy. Capital. Make sure you remember everything I've taught you. I have a feeling you might find something special. How exciting! I'll be watching from the steps, my little bird. Good luck! Thank you, Daddy. Huh. I see a trowel. Now I'm ready. Let's use the trowel on the dirt. That smell. The treasure's here. Earthy and sweet. Thomas Cena, a true archaeologist, uses the tools of her trade. Oh. Trowel again. Nothing here. Yeah, I dig this part of the game. <laughs> oh, I'll stop. Treasure. Daddy, I found the treasure. What is that? Pot? Look. Well done, little bird. Your first successful excavation. That urn you're holding is very old and precious. Take good care of it, all right? I will, Daddy. I promise. 
Why is it every time I say a terrible joke, chat fills up with blank messages? Like Dan Blank. I do have a feeling there is something exceptional to be discovered here. I must gain Mr. Bryden's permission to excavate. Damn. We need him to say yes. Or yas. It's the barrow itself that I'm more interested in excavating. Hmm. That rain sound is lovely. Darkness falls quickly here. I should make my way back to the inn. Darkness comes for us all in the end. There is great evil in the darkness. <laughs> Creepy night. Super creepy. Good evening, Mr. Crozier. Evening. Thanks again for the fossil, lass. You're welcome. It's truly a beauty. You're most welcome. That isn't fog, that's your toot in the game. How long have you Earthy been collecting sweet. fossils? Ever since I were a boy. The moors look a barren place, but there are plenty of fossils to be found in the rock formations. All manner of creatures to uncover. Such a playground for a young lad. What's your favorite piece in your collection? The ammonite you gave me today. The most recent is always the best. Indeed. What about you, lass? Do you collect out? I do. You see, I'm writing a book on the Barrows of England. It shall be called Vestiges of the Antiquities in Rural England. I document all my findings. But what do you a collect? Terrible name. Pottery, tools and such. Bones too, no doubt. No, I leave those in place. You've got a morbid heart, lass. Fussing about in old graves like that. We're not dissimilar in that we both take an interest in the remains of the long gone. I suppose you have a point there. How's your book coming along, then? Very well, thank you. Though I'm rather keen to begin my chapter on Hobbs Barrow. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. I have a massive tab now. I bought that guy so many drinks. Good evening, gentlemen. What are you going to do about him? If he thinks he can take her away from here, he's got another thing coming. I am going to knock his bloody block off. <laughs> In fact, I can think of a better punishment. Are they going to no, fight? What do you want, lady? Piss off. You heard the man. Charming. No respect. No respect at all. Oh, he's playing that game with a knife. Good evening, sir. Uh, I'll leave you to it. All right, you're cre you're a creep. You're very creepy. I don't wish to wake him up. It's Herbert, the local stray. Hello again, Cyril. You're still here. Did Mister oh Long God. convince you of the virtues of Bewley Station? What the hell do you think? Now bugger off and leave me to me drink. All right, fuck all these people. I'm going he to bed. He's even more wound up than usual. These people are extremely rude. Time for bed. Tomorrow I shall convince Mr. Bryden to allow me to begin my excavation. Miss Bateman. What? How are you? Tired. Gonna buy you a drink? Buy me a drink? One won't hurt. 
Excellent. I feel bad about what happened last night. I'm sorry I can't remember it. That's all right, Mr. Tillett. Alcohol can do all sorts of damage to one's memory. I was thinking that maybe if we had another drink tonight, I might remember what happened. I'm not sure that's logical. That's actually a real thing. Trying? I don't need any further convincing. Take your seat, Miss Bateman. I shall return with the goods. That that actually is a thing where if you like recreate the environment in which you learn something, you sometimes to Leonard recall Shoulder. it easier. Wherever he may be. If you were drunk, if you were like in a windstorm, like I've been meaning to ask you something. Yes. Why did Leonard Shoulder ask you to dig up Hobbs Barrow? Despite his disappearing act the previous evening, not to mention his questionable sobriety, I decided Mr. Tillett was to be my ally. I spoke again of Mr. Shoulder's letter, his proposed excavation, and my status as an antiquarian and barrow digger. He was fascinated and quite excited at the prospect of meeting the soon-to-be author of a real-life book. You must find all manner of riches on your digs. Barrow digging is not all success, Mr. Tillett. Often I'll come across the likeliest of sites steeped in promise. We set to work with shovel and pick and all the other barrow opening paraphernalia you can imagine. Every stone carefully taken down. Every shovel full of earth put dutifully through the sieve. And we find nothing. Or you may find a miserable remnant of animal bone or a shard of pottery hardly to be recognized from the peat in which it decayed. Sometimes it's as if some Neolithic humorist prepared an elaborate practical joke for your special benefit. It still sounds much more exciting than spending your day sitting in England's most remote railway station. <sighs> Are you all right, Mr. Tillett? I've had another argument with Agnes. Your wife? Aye. She didn't want me coming to the plough tonight. Truth is, I've been drinking my life away since my mother passed. Oh, that's terrible. I'm sorry for your loss. You're kind, Miss Bateman. Thank you. It's been a year since the old girl left us. She had a horrible end. Wasting away, day by day. Consumption got her. She would know but bones by the end. I can't get the image out of my mind. She were everything to me. I'm so sorry. I apologize for going on, Miss Bateman. It's not appropriate. Don't worry, Mr. Tillett. I appreciate your openness. I used to love going for walks out in the moor, my mother and I, ever since I were a little one. she gets get a tear in her eye as she looked out upon it. She loved this land. I asked Mr. Crozier to build a bench, which we've erected as a favorite lookout spot on the moors. Margaret's Lookout, we called it. Aye. That's a beautiful tribute. Aye. If you take a seat there, do keep her in your thoughts, won't you? Of course, Mr. Tillett. I can relate in some manner. My father had an accident when I was very young. He's still alive, but he can neither move nor speak. He spends his entire life bedbound and incapable of communicating or looking after himself in any way. How dreadful. He was a barrow digger himself, an antiquarian of some renown. He taught me so much, even though I was so young. I think writing this book is my way of carrying on his work. It helps me reclaim those earlier memories of him and I visit him often to tell him all about my excavations. Can he hear you? I've no idea. The doctors aren't sure. I'd do anything to make him better, Mr. Tillett. I'd do anything to bring him back to the man he was. Don't say anything. I am in a state of suspended mourning for a man caught between life and death. Dreadful. Just dreadful. We all have our weaknesses. Mine just happens to be my father. Hey, Kevin. And what of your mother? Coffee? A cold woman. We haven't talked in quite some time. Come I think she blamed me for my father's accident somehow. You were but a child. Indeed. She thus saw it fit that a governess should raise me as she spent her life grieving for my father. Well then, I propose a toast. A toast to what? A shared sense of loss. I'll toast to that, Arthur. Now then, enough of this wallowing. Let us be merry. Another round. I really shouldn't. But I did. 
and another after that, and another. Why would you drink so much? The frustrations of my visit to Bewley slipped away with each swill of Stanley's finest ale. I drank it, I drank it, I drank it. Slowly, Mr. Tillerson became more attractive. His big, smelly breath wasn't quite so smelly anymore. We had great fun that night, Mr. Tillerton and I. Wow, okay. <laughs> I treasure the memory. <laughs> Go on, then. <laughs> Let's hear those pipes. I uh, mustn't. Oh, Sing no. the song. You're incorrigible. Please. You'll make a sad man happy. Oh, all right, Oh, then. God, this is going to be awful. We're not going to actually hear, are we? Oh, God. Clasps, Celts, and arrowheads I'll try to claw within my clutch. And if a shield I should espy, I'll vow there ne'er was such. With popish tricks and relics rare, the priests their flocks do gull. In casting out the earth, take care. Huzzah! I've found a skull! Thomasina. What is this? H who are you? I'm the one that saved your father. What do you mean? You were here 25 years ago. My father? You were deep down with the others. You were there and something went wrong. I dragged him out. Impossible. I helped him then and I can help him again. I, I don't understand. Believe my words. You'll find proof in morning. Now go. One more thing. This is not a dream. Uh, Expiscor? That was a dream, right? Goodness, that was a terrible sleep. Wait a minute. It's dawn on the second day. Look to the east. Gandalf. What's this? A letter? Or book? There's a strange stone strapped to the cover. I A W. Mm -mm. All right, lower time. Are you done on that bit? Pumpkin. You can try the different store. I just pick, picked one of them. Maybe the other store has some more options. I haven't ordered yet. You can just switch to a different one too. They have more stuff. All right, lower time, chat. I need chat to get ready. You're about to get lowered. So get comfy. I'm about to get some interesting story stuff. Don't Dan despair. This is not, this is a good thing. <clears throat> Arrived at a decent day's ride from Bakewell. This is a curious place. Logos seem distant. I am to meet my local contact tomorrow, so it'll be an early night for me. 
I shall try to keep a diary of my stay here and not give up uh, by day three of the excavation as usual. Despite the thrill of possible new discoveries, I cannot stop thinking about my <laughs> dear wife and wonder if, if I should have left her in the current state. I must have faith that, that she will conquer this bout of illness. True to form, my journal has been abandoned. Let that not speak for the excitement I feel for this excavation. After much preparation, we dig tomorrow. Such an exceptional sight with the unique history. As for the dangers, we shall meet them head first. We are prepared. I also sought out a local wise woman yesterday, and she provided me with a tincture of my for my beloved's nausea. Grivadarum. I am sure she said I'm sure she shall be pleased with it upon my return. Lo, a place of miracles. A planted seed sprouted before our eyes and illuminated our path. Nature's laws hold no meaning here, but I clutch my tablet with the knowledge that it shall end this. P, Fo, Theta, Epsilon. We found this code was, we found the code was simply in the singularity of the characters. All eyes must face toward the seventh Archontronic. When the sun and the moons meet, the guardian shall be defeated. A dead language reveals the path. Chat, what do you want for Starbucks? Roar in Starbucks. What do you guys want? Uh, Captain Tempo um, volunteered to pay for everyone Starbucks. Yay! Thank you, Captain Tempo. We'll send you the bill. All right, seems like Captain Tempo only has $5, so we're going to get one coffee, and everyone gets one sip of the coffee, okay? We're going to spread it around. We're going to want anyone that wants black coffee to get a sip first. Everyone that just wants cream will add cream after. Everyone that's that sugar will go third. And then everyone will get a sip of the coffee and get the coffee they want. And those on a diet can just sniff it. <laughs> a dead language reveals the path. For thou art the moon and the chief of the stars. Listen to the things I have said. Follow the words of my mouth. Reveal thyself to me. I heard a whisper, not once, again and again. I will pour out my spirit. I will pour out my spirit. I will pour out my spirit. It appears to be a journal full of hogwash. I don't recognize the handwriting. Maybe Stanley knows more about it. Hmm. That's a strange journal out of nowhere. Good morning. How's your head, Miss Bateman? That was quite the tune you treated us to last night. To be honest, Stanley, I felt better. I take it you slid this journal under my door? I beg your pardon? The journal, Stanley. Well, I certainly did no such thing. Nor could have anyone else. You're the only guest staying here. What's the meaning of all this? Do you propose that it manifested itself out of thin air? Well, uh... Well, uh... Kitty Exorcism, thank you for five gift subs for chat. Thank you, L. S. Stroy's Black Dragon for 200 bits. Thank you so much. And Brood, Haring, uh, Cat Daddy Neff, uh, Sir Valentine, Deluded Raven, thank you for those resubs, Domas, Duff, and Mar Marshin, thank you for the follows. I'm sorry. I just don't understand how else it could have got there. I 
Are you sure there was no one else here overnight? Without doubt. How very, very peculiar. So, what does it say inside? Take a look. Well, I can't make head nor tail of it. Neither can I. Maybe hmm. someone else in the village can help you with it. The wise one. What do you make of this stone? That's a funny looking thing. It's got a cockerel on it. Yes, but have you seen anything like it? Never. Dan, I see you're at 8,000 subs. What's your monthly record? My uh, top record, I think, was we just broke 10,000 uh, subs during one of the er far earlier hor uh, horror months. That was our sub record. It was about 10,000 exactly, almost. Do you ever have strange dreams, Stanley? Me? I sleep as sound as a baby. I had one such dream last night. It was so vivid. What were it about? Um... I was at Hobbs Barrow. Oh? But everything was different. Great peaks soared in the distance. Oh. And there was a creature. A creature, you say? Yes. A short, robed fellow. Eyes as black as pitch. It told me that my father had been there in Hobbs Barrow many years ago, but something went wrong. You look like a hobgoblin. helped him escape. It said that I would find proof in the morning. Oh, the journal. You've had a premonition, lass. Please, Stanley, I've no time for that nonsense. But I'll admit it's a strange coincidence. Now, what did I tell you about Hobbs Barrow? That I should leave it alone. Aye. Hogwash. Your dream reminds me of a story from my childhood. An old folk tale about Hobbs Barrow. A folk tale, huh? Guilty conscience with the brand new Prime Gaming Sub. Woo! Thank you very much. What's well, going to be your first ever subscriber emote? The chat would like to know. It's going to be your first one. There's lots of good ones to pick from. What's it going to be? Hmm. What is this folk tale you mention? Well, when I were a wee boy, there were talk of a goblin. Dan Bongo! They say he lived inside Hobbs Barrow. Hence the name, Hobbs Barrow. Hob, coming from Hob Goblin, of course. Unfortunately, I don't remember anything else about it. I was told not to believe in such fairy tales, Stanley. Don't close your mind to such things, lass. I'm sure Mr. Shoulder will tell you more. Perhaps, if I ever meet him. Goodbye. See you soon. Where is the elusive Good morning, Mr. Kemp. Mr. Good Shoulder? Good Miss Tompkins. I'm here for his lordship's paper. Sorry, lass. Mr. Price hasn't dropped them off this morning. I heard he actually left the village yesterday. Indeed. I can vouch for that. Ma'am? Good day. Oh, dear. His lordship won't be pleased. My sincerest apologies, Miss Tompkins. I'll come back in a few days. Ta-ra. Goodbye. What is this sparkly thing right here? The knife is stuck deep in the table. There's a... Oh, it's the guy from last night. <laughs> Pull it! Goodness me. I can't budge it. Be careful, Miss Bateman. You'll cut yourself. I spent all morning trying to get that bloody thing out. I shall be having words with that scoundrel next time he shows his face. I can't budge it either. <laughs> That's why finances are all over the place. Ugh, curses. We have our very own Excalibur. It's all yours if you can pull it out, King Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, what about the chisel? I do not wish to damage Mr. Kemp's table any further than it already has been. What about the worm? I can't see how that will help me. What about the glove? No, that's... What about the lamp? No, that won't achieve any. What about... What about Prime Gaming? No, that didn't work either. Damn. <laughs> yeah, it's not coming out of there. I'm not strong enough to pull this out with my bare hands. Oh, well. Always love Horror Month. Well, chat loves Horror Month, so Horror Month's here to stay forever! Woo! Right. I need to convince Mr. Bryden to let me excavate Hobbs Barrow. 
and find out where this journal came from. Curses. Uh, Zorby, thank you for the prime gaming sub. Poor thing is dead now. Rest in peace, Kenneth. So creepy today. So foggy. Good day. I'm still setting up my stall. Come back later. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, it looks like you're stalling right now, ma'am. Oh, Zorbeast and Chillel, thank you for the Prime Gaming subs. What's going to be your first ever subscriber emotes? And then Dark Templar with that two-month resub. Welcome back. Thank you. And Sezzle with the six-month resub. Thank you as well. Who would be able to translate the old... Oh, hello, Mr. Priest. Good morning, Father Roach. Ah, Miss Bateman. What a pleasure to see you again. Have you tracked down Mr. Shoulder yet? We got a damn bobble. Don't get me started. I'll take that as a no. Indeed. And we have a Dan Beg. Two emotes. Nice. Do you recognize this journal? Hmm. What a tatty old thing. You ought to take better care of your possessions, Miss Bateman. It's not mine. Then whose is it? That's precisely what I'm trying to find out. I'm afraid I can't help you. I haven't seen it before. Dan Beg, not Bag. So just change it, change it to it either. What do you make of this stone? Hmm. I don't recognize the symbol from any Christian iconography. Did you make it yourself? No, never mind. Uh oh! We activated the hype train! Oh shit! Hype train! What brings you to the square today? I'm meeting a couple of young congregation members to go over some scripture. You're welcome to join us. Thank you, Father Roach, but I have quite a busy day ahead of me. We will be at St. Edmund's, should you wish to join us later. Thanks for your time. Lord be with you. Uh, do you know anything about this stone? What do you make of this stone? Hmm. I don't recognize the symbol from any Christian iconography. Did you make it yourself? No, never mind. Level two hype trade! Thank you, CLC Wolf, for five gift subs. Elizabeth with a gift sub to Dubbin. A uh, thousand bits from Wasabi, a thousand bits from mine. Uh, Crowler with a brand new sub. L. Estrada Black Dragon with the 200 bits. Mr. Moonlight with the resub. Uh, Jack, J Job Mac with the resub. Uh, Moistine with the resub. Uh, Bagel Boy with the bits. Banana Shrek with 420 bits. Yay. Nice. Uh, Roarer, your boy Ellis, Shurak, Wolfpack with five gift subs. <coughs> uh, Rygar with the Prime Gaming sub. Thousand bits from Asabi, another hundred bits from Winterfred. Tinker Sky with five gift subs. Level three! Ah, <laughs> uh, Johnny, thank you for the resub. People in past chat are like, There's no hype train, Dan. This happened a long time ago. What are you wasting time for? We're trying to learn about the excavation of House Barrow. This didn't happen yet. But current chat's like, it's happening right now! Let's go in the church. Bar, but echo with the gift subs for chat. Thank you. Timid with the brand new sub. Ah, Johnny with the resub. 2,000 bits from Ashuru. Thank you very much. That's level four, Hype Train. Uh, Saucy Wings with the Dan Panic. Calback with the 100 bits. RX Grim with the 100 bits. Thank you very much, guys. Absolutely amazing. Thomasina. Good morning, Arthur. Hi. You look a bit addled. Are you feeling all right? I am not used to drinking as much as we did. <laughs> Aye, my head is pounding. To tell you the truth, Arthur, I've had a somewhat puzzling morning. Oh? Someone slipped this journal under the door of my room. 
Whose journal is it? I have no idea. The text refers to some sort of excavation. Well, Stanley must be playing tricks on you. He swore his innocence. I thought perhaps you might have done it? No, it wasn't me. That's for certain. Somehow I have a clear memory of last night. The journal? I wonder who left me this journal then. Mind if I take a closer look? Please go ahead. The writings of a madman. I don't disagree. Do the sketches mean anything to you? No, not at all. But they turn me stomach. You might want to show this to Mother Mildred. Oh, Larry Quarter with two free t-shirts for chat. Type exclamation point enter if you want a chance to win a free t-shirt. Oh my god. And then Moonlit Presents with the bits. Elizabeth with the gift subs. Steamboat with the bits. Nautilus with five more gift subs. Casual Kate with the resub. Rx Grim with the bits. Kelbeck with the with the bits. Uh Barbadeco, thank you for the resubs. Uh thank you, uh Timmy for the gift sub. Uh, Megan, thank you for a 109-month resub. Thank you so much, guys. Absolutely amazing. Who is Mother Mildred? Some think her a witch. A witch? A witch. Aye. She might be able to help you with the symbols. Where can I find her? She lives alone in a little cottage within her and Wood here. You shouldn't have too much trouble finding her. Thanks, Arthur. <coughs> You're welcome. Thank you for the gifts of Blue Birdie. And more bets for Blue Cats. Zenheim with the resub. ACAS FN with the five uh, month resub. How do we know that, uh, that she's a witch? Because someone removed all her sand, and now she's just a witch. <laughs> Doesn't even make sense. <laughs> What do you make of this stone? It's a good shape for skimming across water. What is it? I'm not sure. It was strapped to the cover of the journal. How mysterious. I had a splendid time last night. I, I even remember most of it this time. <laughs> Thanks for listening to me going on. I really appreciate it. What are you saying? Thank you too, Arthur. H is still like uh, uh, Steve, uh, 42K and Metal Gundam, you won free shirts! Go to dansgaming.store slash redeem to claim your free shirt. Again, this dansgaming.store. This is the t-shirt design that you guys won. If anyone wants to get one for themselves, go to dansgaming.store. You can buy one. They're on sale until the 15th. And you'll hopefully get them before Halloween. It's, it should be before Halloween or on Halloween or maybe slightly after. But it'll be, it'll be close. Go to dancegaming.store. And if you want one, go to dancegaming.store slash redeem to get your free shirt. Thanks to Larry Corner. Shouldn't you be manning the station? The line is down. Track damage between Bewley and Bakewell. No trains for a day or more. Does that mean I'm stranded here? For the time being, Thomasina. Capital. This isn't the capital, no. Why do people think Mother Mildred is a witch? Just because a woman lives alone in the woods doesn't mean she flies about on a broomstick. There's more to it than that. They say she lays with demons. <gasps> Who are they? Oh, you know, local folk. Sex with demons? Hogwash. Some also go to her for potions and spells. Spells? Come now, Arthur. Truth be told, she's a nice old lady. I sometimes see her foraging in the brambles around here. Will she burn at the stake sometime soon? You might think us backward in Beulet, Thomasina, but we're not that backward. Sorry, Arthur. I only meant to tease. Goodbye. Tara. Fifty gift subs from Wasabi! Chat's going crazy! <laughs> Thank you so much. And then Chesticles McGee. Thank you for 100 bits. And Steve42 and Nicel, thank you for ordering Hormone shirts. 
Detective Kid with 100 bits. Some of you guys, your screen names are just like, you could have picked any name in the world, but some of you guys go with like, butt, butt bumps or poop spider or, you know, some random like weird name that you, you have to say to people at like TwitchCon, like, or have it on your badge at TwitchCon, uh, boob watcher or something like, <laughs> what? <laughs> That's the name you go with? Uh, Thanatos, thank you for the resub. Rogvar, thank you for the resub. Krizex, at, at TwitchCon, you have to wear a name badge all, at all times in the con that has your name printed on it. I, I can't wait to see someone with a, one of those names there. Um, hmm. I have nothing else. Where did he say she was in the woods? Oh, trouble. Ash, Dan Eyes! Thomasina, dear, come say goodbye to your father. Come on now, don't make him wait. I don't want to. Aren't you going to miss me? I hate you, Daddy. That was a wow. strong words for such a little lady. I want to come with you. We've been through this, little bird. You can't come with me this time, but we'll go to Zebra next month. I promise. Oh, what a dig that shall be. I hate you. Wow. Well, I love you. See you soon, little bird. <laughs> what a rude child. And then, thank you... Uh, CC of the C, Leandra, Sean LP with five gift subs, but pizza for the brand new Prime Gaming. But pizza? But pizza, thank you for the brand new sub. Um, Ashy with the 100 bits. Moonlit, thank you for gifting a sub. Uh, Peach Tea to me, Little Red Cherry. Um, Digi Dan, thank you for the resubs. Butt pizza? Huh. Okay, then. I wonder how it differs from regular pizza. Does it taste like ass? Uh, Milanix, thank you for gifting a sub to Butt Nugget. Ew. Andy Sweet, thank you for the Prime Gaming sub. I appreciate that. <gasps> Which? Please, forgive my intrusion. Are you Mother Mildred? Some call me that. I prefer Mildred Walker, given as that's my name. Apologies. Thomasina Bateman. I think we met at Bewley Station. I take it Panswick's men have cleared off. Good riddance. Those ruffians would cut their own noses off if he asked them to. I recognised you the moment I laid eyes on you at the station. I beg your pardon? Oh, yeah, it's quite a striking family resemblance. You have your father's eyes, Miss Bateman. What? You knew my father? Such piercing blue eyes he had. What a handsome young man. William. He was here, in Bewley. Oh, yes. A long time ago, mind. 25 years by my reckoning. But I'll never forget those eyes. Thank you, Zimmy99, for, I mean, uh, for the gift sub. And then Scrag Letty with 69 gift subs for chat. Nice. 69 gift subs. Nice. That is a number that is a, an amount of things. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, and then Chad, thank you for ordering a shirt. And Anonymous, thank you for ordering a shirt as well. Mormon Jeezy's, uh, thank you for gifting a sub. She Melman's Mallard Dog League for the resub. Thank you guys so much. You guys are amazing. The love for Horror Month is insane. So thank you guys very much. 
Why was my father in Bewley? He were helping Samuel Bride and excavate Hobbs Barrow. You must be jesting. Do I look like I'm jesting? Not really. Look like you're ingesting, maybe. How did you come to meet my father? One might say I have a reputation in these parts. Folks from all around come to me for help with their ailments. Ernwood is abundant with flora that, if mixed correctly, will cure almost any ill. Your father must have caught wind of this, as one day he came to me, asking for a cure. A cure for what? Your mother was with child, and she was suffering the most terrible nausea. Adam. I made something to help her. The journal. This was entered in the journal. It belongs to my father. What journal? Uh, thank you, Aslak, for the 31-month resub. Appreciate that. Yeah, Metal Gundam, I believe you want a, a t-shirt? Uh, go to dancegaming.store slash redeem to claim your shirt. If you haven't already. Take a look at this. A passage recalls meeting a local wise woman to seek a tincture for his beloved's nausea gravidarum. Aye, that's me. I made the tincture for him. This... this is incredible. You don't recognize your own father's handwriting. It's been so many years since I've seen it. What do you make of this stone? I-A-W. I haven't a clue. Perhaps it's an old folk trinket, or a talisman of some kind. The moors are steeped in folklore. Uh, Ozzy Bogart, thank you for the brand new sub. What can you tell me about the excavation? Well, not much. I only met your father twice. The last time he asked me if I knew anything about binding magic. Binding magic? Binding magic. He said he needed it for the excavation. Hogwash. My father is a man of logic and reason. Why would he be asking about such nonsense? Perhaps you don't know him as well as you think you do. Anyway, I know nothing of magic and told him so. He seemed disappointed. I never saw him again. But I understand the excavation went ahead. Samuel bride and hanged himself not long after. Reason enough for you to stay well clear of that place. Hmm. Hmm. The landlord of the Plough and Furrow told me about a folk tale associated with Hobbs Barrow. Something about a goblin. Are you familiar with it? No doubt there is such a tale. Name any beastie you can think of and someone round here will have a story about it. My thoughts precisely. CLC Wolf with 10 gift subs per chat. Leviathrex with 5 gift subs per chat. Thank you guys very much. Anonymous with 5 gift subs per chat. Oh, we're like so close to our last record. It's like, it's like right there. It's so close. There's 15 seconds. Glenn, thank you for the race up. Flamager with 10 gift subs per chat. We broke the record. Oh, yeah, we did it. Thank you guys very much. Uh, King Zuni, thank you for the gift subs for chat. Raina, thank you for the gift subs for chat. Thank you so much. That's level six hype train. Thank you guys for the middle of the Tuesday uh, sub. Glenn, thank you for the 47 month resub. I know you were here, world first. Thank you guys so much. You guys have been absolutely amazing. And if you're watching the recording and you're like, I'm tired of you screwing about these subs. Well, it was fun the moment. You don't gotta be a Debbie Downer. I'll get back to the game, I promise. I'm sorry, it just happened during the, this game. It was awesome. I see uh, past ch people watching past then going, why is he talking about this stuff? I just want to hear the game. <laughs> we don't even like it. Uh, well, I'm pretty much. Thank you for the bits. Genghis is loving for that resub. That's me. Oh, yeah. You've collected all the level six emotes. Beautiful. Uh, what do we get for setting a record with the hype train? Let me double check. I think, uh... Let me think. I wrote it down. 
Nothing! Nothing happens! Nothing at all! Absolutely nothing! It's just a record, and that's it. That's all that happens. They didn't program anything to happen if you break a record. It's just, you get not we get nothing. It's just the record broken. Woo! That's it. <laughs> Other than that, there's nothing. There's no extra thing to happen. Just it's just a, a, like a like a record just to beat the record. I'm gonna go grab my coffee. I'll be right back in just a minute. It got here a little bit ago.
You never saw my father again after the excavation? No. I always assumed he just went home. Hmm. Who excavated Hobbs Barrow alongside Samuel Bryden and my father? From memory, it were just the two of them. What do you think my father meant by binding magic? I've no idea. He didn't explain more and I didn't wish to pry. Hmm. This just doesn't sound like my father at all. You'll have to ask him yourself. I'm afraid my father has been incapacitated since I was a child. He cannot speak nor move. Terrible. Oh, I I'm sorry. You said that the flora here could cure almost any ill. Almost, my dear. But your father's affliction sounds beyond my abilities. Charles Bryden mentioned there was a third man involved in the excavation. Is that so? Well, you best ask him about it. He knows more than I do. Can you tell me anything about Leonard's shoulder? I know of him, as is the nature of such a small town. I also know he invited you here. Little escapes you, Miss Walker. So they say. My path rarely crosses with his. Let's put it that way. But he's a nice enough fellow. I see. What does that mean? Do you know Lord Panswick? I know his labourers make a mess of these woods, the brutes. The man himself hasn't graced me with his presence. You've never met him? Not since he were a wee lad. A maid brought him to me with a sore stomach. It were all the rich food they were feeding him. Now more. Thank you for your help, Ms. Walker. Uh, the, the brother said that Charles Bryden hung himself, so, no, I think it's true. There, his brother's still alive, though, who took over the farm. What do you to make of this stone, man? I've already shown her that. Does she want to see my glove? I don't wish to give that away. Let's stab her with the chisel. I'm not sure they would be interested. I shouldn't enter under. What are those berries you're picking? An ancient breed. No good for eating. However, they do have some medicinal qualities. I see. Some medicinal qualities. Hmm. Hmm. Miss Bateman? What? Yes. Remember what I told you when we first met? You're better off waiting for the next train back to the city. Why? Something terrible happened to Samuel Bryden in that barrow. Whatever they found down there, I'd wager it got to your father, too. Tell me you won't disturb Hobbs Barra. I can't make that promise, Mildred. Can't say I didn't warn you. There is something unnatural about that place. We must seek to understand the world by rational means, Miss Walker. One cannot abandon reason. Well, until you start seeing crazy stuff. Denied. Thomasina? Thomasina, come here this instant. I'm playing with Josephine. She can wait. This is very important. Hmm. Why not take her with you? What is it, Mummy? It's... it's your father. Daddy's home? No, my dear. I must go to Bakewell with haste. Miss Bowes will look after you whilst I'm gone, is that clear? Where's Daddy? He's had... an accident. What happened? He's come off his horse. Silly Daddy. Will he be all right? Of course. Of course he will be fine. Came Your off his horse? Is as strong as an ox. But I need to go collect him, all right? Can't I come too? No, dear. Miss Bowes will look after you. But I want to come. Go pick up your dolls, then come inside, all right? Yes, Mummy. Josephine, Josephine let's go. Josephine, it's time to go inside now. Where did Mummy go? She's gone. Resin. The resin has set somewhat. 
It's firmly gripped to the stump. What if we use the chisel to get the resin off? What if I took the resin and I make a I've dome with some it? Waxy resin. And then inside of the dome, I have a great evil. And there's a resin tint evil. I've collected this lump of waxy resin. No, that won't achieve anything useful. What? I helped him then, and I can help him again. What? Hello, man in the woods. Arthur, you won't believe it. The journal belongs to my father. He was here in Bewley. <laughs> Arthur? Arthur. Hello. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm trying to remember something. What is it? What? I'm not sure. Something in the woods. It will come back to me. You say your father were in Bewley? Yes. Mildred said that he helped Samuel Bryden excavate Hobbs Barrow 25 years ago. Well, I'll be. Let's talk about it tonight at the plough. Uh... Arthur, I must tell you about the dream I had. I was at Hobbs Barrow and there was a creature. It told me it saved my father from something inside and that I would find proof of this in the morning. Sure enough, when I awoke, the journal was in my room. Mildred confirmed the journal belonged to my father. The creature told me it could help my father again. I mean, it was merely a dream. I don't know what to think or anymore. Or was it? Arthur? He must be really high Arthur, on something. Arthur, are you listening? Fine then, we'll talk later. I hope you piece together your memories. Something's wrong with Arthur as well. I wonder if he was there at the excavation too. He seems kind of lost like our daddy. Oh, it's the, the man again. I. Hello, dear. Good day. Who are you? I believe we've met. Miss Thomasina Bateman, the famous antiquarian. My reputation precedes me. I can assure you it does. And you are? James. James who? Are you a painter? You see this beck before you. Look at the water. See how it tumbles and falls. I seek one spot on which my eyes can rest. Be it a stone or a small corner of the current, I meet it with my gaze. And out of the tumbling and falling, a new land rises. I see a new world. You certainly have the eloquence of an artist. This game may be very slow, but I really like the story so far. It's very, very nice. It, like, it has a nice flow to it. The mystery's there. It's kind of like, I'm, I'm curious what's in this damn barrow. What are you painting? A new world. Quite the ambition. Indeed. My ambition knows no bounds. Can I see it? Not yet. It's not finished. And such a world is not complete without you in it. You flatter me, James. Nonsense. Say you'll let me paint you. Um... I find that surprising, James. I've been told that you finished quite quickly, so I'm confused. I haven't even seen your work. What if you can't paint? Don't fret, my dear. You shall be the shining star of my new world. When the time comes, I shall call on thee. What do you make of this stone? It looks antique. 
You might want to keep a hold of it. Do you know of Hobbs Barrow? I'd like to know more about you, Thomasina. Smooth. What time do you like to rise in the morning? How do you like your tea? What makes you happy? Um... I don't like tea. I've tried drinking tea many times, and it just... I it just I just can't like it. It just doesn't I I've tried drinking so many types of teas in so many different ways and it just doesn't do it for me. I don't know. Like coffee I'll co coffee I'll take over over tea personally. It just I'm sorry. I've tried tea many times. I don't even like sweet tea, the U.S. version of sweet tea. I don't even like that tea. It just tea just doesn't do it for me. I don't know why. Well, I like to rise early and watch the sunrise. With your husband, I'm sure. No, I'm currently unentangled. Such a view should be shared with at least a lover. Do you deem yourself fit for this position? Indubitably. But do go on. How do you like your tea? Hot, with just a splash of lowercase. No sugar, of course. <laughs> no sugar. It rots the teeth. Your smile is as dazzling as the Himalayan snow. Oh, James. And finally, what makes you happy? Spending time with my father. I should like to meet him. Perhaps you will. And you, James? I propose the same queries to you. All in good time. My truths will surround you in good time. Do you know Leonard's shoulder? A man of Bewley? Yes. I care not for the men of Bewley. Only for the visitors. What do you know of Lord Panswick? A fine gentleman. Now that is someone who commands respect. Do you know him personally? No, I, I don't think anyone can really claim that. But what a tiring subject. Shall we discuss something a little more exciting? Are you the Lord? Bye. See you soon, my dear. He sounds like he may be the Lord. Because he's way too sus to not be. He's the only one in this whole town that seem to have more information on him than anyone else. I know, he's sus AF. Good day. Hey up. Hey up. Look at this, Mr. Crozier. It's my father's journal. Oh, I? Why are you showing me? Did you slip it under my door last night? Ha! <laughs> have you gone daft? Why would I have your father's journal? Never mind. Do the sketches inside mean anything to you? Looks like a load of rubbish to me. Magnetic Frost with the 35 month reset. I found out my father visited Bewley 25 years ago. William Bateman, perhaps you remember him? I would have been just a lad. What were he here for? That's what I intend to find out. What do you make of this stone? Don't look like out to me. Are you familiar with any local folklore? Oh, why? The old cobbler used to tell me some right stories. Swore he sold a pair of boots to a goblin when he were a young man. A goblin, you say? I take it this cobbler was a regular at the Plough and Furrow? Never drank a day in his life. Sober as a judge. Have you been to the Devil's Toe? Yes, I'm familiar with the cairn. Some say they've seen the goblin's daughter there, playing her fiddle. Can't say I've seen her myself, mind. Do you know any other stories about this goblin? I don't have the time to be standing here gossiping about old wives' tales. Apologies. Have you heard about Goblin? Goblin D's nuts? I'm having some trouble extricating a knife from a table in the plough and furrow. Might I borrow a pair of pliers? A knife, you see. I can get that out for you. That's very kind of you, Mr. Crozier. Think nothing of it. Wait here. <laughs> oh, this NPC got wrecked. That were a struggle. Here you are. 
Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. Acquired knife. That was a fatal mistake. Stab him! I don't wish to give that away. Oh. Darn. I was about to become the town murderer. And then I get my own TV show on Netflix. Ah, Damn. All right, let's go out. I know, now I got no Netflix show. I don't wish to carry around my heavy- Oh, kitty cat. It's Herbert, the local stray. I don't wish to wake him up. <laughs> let's see if... Let's go to... Mr. Bryden's farm. Oh. So many flashbacks. Mummy? What are you doing? Get away from the fire, Thomasina. What are you burning? Nothing. Just waste. Now go inside. Wait a minute. Oh, it's evil. Science. Science books. Burn them. Burn the evil science. Ab. Abrax. Mummy, what is this? Waste. Burn it. Why is she throwing page by page into the fire instead of just dumping the whole thing in there? That's way, it's so slow, just, 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 just. Imagine if you do it to like a Bible or something, like a billion pages, one at a time. Good day, Mr. Bryden. Miss, I, I'll i stop you there. I know what you're going to ask. What, Mr. No, Bryden? I haven't changed my mind. There'll be no digging here, lass. Mr. Bryden, allow me to explain. There has been an astonishing development this morning. Yes? My father was with your brother during the excavation. Oh. Yes. Can you believe it? I had no idea he had been here. The answer's still no, lass. I saw what happened to poor Samuel. I won't risk the same happening to anyone else. But... That's enough now. You can feast your eyes on that hovel to your heart's content, but there'll be no digging. What if I convince you... With the journal. Look, Mr. Bryden, my father's journal. It confirms he was with your brother during the excavation of Hobbs Barrow. Ha! <laughs> Take that away from me. I'll be having none of that. Then I'm afraid I'm gonna have to kill you. I don't wish to give that away. Never mind. Not yet. Maybe if I slap him with the glove, I can challenge him to a duel for his lands. Mr. Shoulder! Mr. Shoulder continues to prove himself elusive. I've no... Try the devil's toe. Nope. Try the church. Hmm. Yeah, I love the atmosphere in this game and I love the like slow build up of the mystery. It's Again, this is a very slow, slow, slow-paced game, but 
I'm hoping it has a big payoff at the end. Investigate the local folklore. Hmm. I'm not sure what... I'm not sure what... That's a peculiar... And I'm legit, like, very interested in what the hell is happening in this in this game. Like, I want to know what the hell's in the damn burrow already. Hmm. I've had some rather unbelievable news, Stanley. Oh. Remarkable. Quite the coincidence, is it not? Remarkable. Just remarkable. Do you recall my father from back then? I'm afraid not. Those were my droving days, you see. I didn't spend much time in Beaulieu, but an interesting turn of events nonetheless. What do you know of Mother Mildred? I'll tell you what I know about Mother Mildred. She wants locking up. How so? She owes me a small fortune on her tab from years ago. Do remind her next time you see her, won't you? I'd rather not get involved, if you don't mind. Be careful who you trust, Miss Bateman. That's sus. Who is Miss Tompkins? A housemaid in the employ of Panswick Manor. She comes by to pick up his lordship's weekly paper. I'm surprised newspapers are available in Bewley. Aye, his lordship gets what he wants. Lord Panswick likes to keep up with affairs from outside of Bewley. Aye, he has many interests around the country. What sort of interests? His lordship's affairs are his own business. Goodbye. See you soon. Maybe I can find the newspapers inside of the mail room for him. I don't, I don't need to go in there again. Mr. Long mustn't be in. I gotta run to the potty, be right back in just a second.
Uh, currently, Kevin is has been staring at a uh, berth for a long time. He's going to do it for a long time more because he has to censor the uh, berth scene at the end of Outlast 2 frame by frame because the tracking doesn't work automatically on it. So he's frame by frame censoring the berth. Uh, that's love, everybody. That's love. Good day. I'm still setting up my stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that he's blurring it frame by frame because it won't. The auto thing won't work very well. What email is he censoring it with? Dan Cringe. It's going to show the cringe is like. <laughs> that scene was entirely unnecessary and just really graphic for no reason. I was like, what the hell? Uh, but Bali State Club trying to be in due to track damage between Bali and Bakewell. It's always pretty convenient. It's Mid Midland Railway. Hmm. Good day, James. My dear. How is your painting coming along? Quite well, but it needs more work. I'm aching to show you, but I must restrain myself. See you soon. Hmm. Uh, they changed the scene from how it was, and now it's way more graphic now. The uh, birthing scene of Outlast 2. It's way... Way more graphic, and it'll definitely get flagged on YouTube if they leave it uncensored. Hello? Weird child. Excuse me, sir. Yes? Did you see a young girl with blonde hair pass by here? No, lass. There you are. Are you Thomasina Batman? <laughs> <laughs> That's my name. Oh, marvelous. It's me, Leonard Shoulder. Mr. Kevin, Shoulder. I'd given up on finding you. Please take a seat, Miss Bateman. We have much to discuss. You've proven to be quite the enigma, Mr. Shoulder. I'm mortified. I offer you a thousand apologies. You see, I've been bound to me bed these past few days with a terrible fever. How dreadful. I take it you're feeling better now? Aye. I were on me way to find you when I stopped here to catch me breath. I've not much go in me these days. I'm sorry to hear that. I were worried you'd have given up on me and left town. I had no idea what had become of you, Mr. Shoulder. I spent a good amount of time pounding on your front door. I'm embarrassed. I really am. I've been doing my best to sleep through the fever. I am so very sorry. Please accept my apology, Miss Bateman. Fine, Mr. Shoulder. I've come all this way. Let us speak of the business at hand. Marvelous. I've just learned that my father was part of a previous excavation of Hobbs Barrow some 25 years ago. Why didn't you mention this in your letter? What? Where did you hear that? I have my means. I swear, Miss Bateman, I had no idea. Hmm. I take it you will also deny delivering me my father's journal? I'm confused. What journal? My father's journal was slipped under my door at the Plough and Furrow. It wasn't you who did this. I've been bound to me bed, lass. Hmm. What an extraordinary coincidence. You are following in your father's footsteps. It would seem so, Mr. Shoulder. Hmm. Why did you invite me to excavate Hobbs Barrow? I've always been curious about the colorful folklore surrounding the place. 
My father told me all sorts of stories about it when I were a wee fellow. Stories that some folk around here take a little too seriously, especially after those lads entered the barrow a while back. How did you know about me? I saw your interview in the Bakewell Times. A young lady traveling about the land, digging up barrows. Perfect for the job. But why do you wish to excavate the barrow? I want to see what those lads found in there. My curiosity has grown over the years. Now it is time for the mystery to be solved. I must say I am rather eager to find out what's in there myself. I know, after all this build-up in this game, eh, there better be something evil and creepy inside that barrow. I've managed to find Hobbs' barrow, but Mr. Bryden is yet to give me permission to excavate. Is that so? Keep trying. You'll relent eventually. Perhaps you could have a word with him. Oh, no. A lovely young lass such as yourself has a better chance of changing his mind than a shaky old goat like me. Hmm. You told me in your letter there would be no issue gaining access to the Barrow. I didn't foresee anyone I wrote to you. I'm sorry this has been more complicated than anticipated. Don't give up yet, Miss Bateman. Keep trying with Mr. Bryden. Did you know my father? I don't believe so. What's his name? William. William Bateman. He was in Beaulieu for at least a few days, from my understanding. I'm sorry, lass. The name doesn't ring a bell. Hmm. Are you sure you had no idea of my father's involvement in the previous excavation? I'm quite sure. A most fascinating coincidence, but nothing more than that. I'm starting to wonder if it's more than mere coincidence, Mr. Shoulder. Miss Bateman, I did not take you for a credulous individual. I'm none of the sort. Uh, hello chat, will Dan be playing Phobia St. Dinfa Hotel? Uh, yes, at some point. It's definitely on my list of things to play. What can you tell me about the previous excavation of Hobbs Barrow? Oh, it was 25 years ago, or thereabout. Back then, Bewley were undergoing a period of great strife. Samuel Bryden hadn't harvested a single crop for two seasons. Even Herne Wood was sick. Berries went to rot almost as quickly as they grew. Folks started to believe the ground were blighted. Disease spread through the livestock too. People were going hungry, a panic set in. That sounds terrible. Aye, but I managed to keep myself fed. These things happen in nature, but the blame for it all fell on Hobbs Barrow. It was long said that a goblin made his home there. A rumor took root that the goblin were not best pleased with the villagers. In revenge for some unperceived slight, the goblin placed a curse on the soil itself. The villagers believed that ridding the barrow of its lodger would put an end to it all. Hogwash. My father would have paid no heed to such tales. Whether it were his intent to join the excavation when coming here, I do not know. But whatever it were that Samuel Bryden and those lads did inside that barrel, people say it did the trick. The crop started to grow back, and health returned to the livestock. Uli were no longer in the grip of dark forces. Hmm. You must understand. Folk here are a superstitious lot. They don't want you disturbing whatever it were those lads did. As far as the villagers are concerned, the problem were fixed. The thought of another excavation must be conjuring panic that you'll undo whatever it were they did. This does explain a lot. And it's also why I'd venture nobody around here wants you to touch the place. Except for you. I want to know what's there. Surely you don't believe these tales of goblins and curses to be true? Not at all. However, I suspect those lads did find something in the barrel. But did it have any connection to failing crops and dying livestock? No. I can assure you there's nothing to fear. Coincidence reigns supreme. So what do you think they found? That Clueless. is for us to discover, Miss Bateman. Who was the third man who joined my father and Mr. Bryden on the excavation? I'm afraid I don't know. 
Although I'd heard about the excavation and I were intrigued by it, I mostly stayed at home during that time. The atmosphere in the village was rather too tense for me liking. And besides, the excavation were undertaken with an air of mystery about it. Hmm. Tell me more of this folklore you mention. It is said that Hobbs Barrow is home to a goblin. Everyone in Bewley has some version or another of this story. But the version my father told me as a child described the barrow as a thin place. The goblin were deemed to be the guardian of this so-called thin place. A thin place? So I wouldn't be allowed there, is that what you're saying? Tell me more about this goblin. Some said he were a mischievous little mite, snatching newborn lambs and smashing windows with pebbles. Others said he were friendly, there to lend a helping hand in times of strife. The latter of which makes it all the more surprising as to why the previous excavation took place. My father's stories put the goblin in the mischievous category. Saxnot, he called the creature. I recall one such anecdote, that Saxnot entered Bewley and ordered a pair of boots to be made by the cobbler. However, when collecting them, he insisted on paying for them with a bag of so's teeth. The cobbler was so scared of angering the goblin that he accepted. A colorful tale indeed, Mr. Shoulder. Has any explanation been offered for why this Saxnot cursed the soil? Your guess is as good as mine, lass. What is a thin place? A place where one can walk between worlds. What? Where the flesh meets the spirit world. Hmm. Just superstition, of course, as you all know. You mean the portal to the dead is in the barrow? Uh, Kiplin, DJS, uh, Polbrod, Krim, Lord Remnell. January Stazu, thank you for the follows. Welcome to our community. I had a peculiar dream last night. I met a creature at Hobbs Barrow. I suppose you might say it was a goblin. It told me it had saved my father from trouble inside Hobbs Barrow. I'll admit the coincidence of this is somewhat astounding. A remarkable coincidence, but nothing more than that. But there is still one thing that puzzles me. The goblin told me proof of its claims would await me in the morning. Surely enough, I awoke to find that my father's journal had appeared in my room. Very queer indeed. Mr. Shoulder, you invited me here, to a town I'd never heard of, only for me to discover that my own father was here 25 years before. And not only that, but that he was also embroiled in some sort of superstitious hysteria which goes against everything he ever taught me. Something is wrong here. This must be more than mere coincidence. It's strange, I'll give you that. But please remember who you are, Miss Bateman. Hmm. The mystery is getting more and more strange, like a goblin, a portal to, to the other worlds. My father being here 25 years before, then he can't speak anymore. He's kind of like This comatose. is my father's journal. Incredible. Can I look inside? You may. Look at these drawings. Wonder what it all means. You and I both. It all feels very out of character for my father. I'm sure you'll find the answers beneath the soil, Miss Bateman. Uh, raise your horn as gifted a horror month t-shirt in the chat. Type exclamation point enter for a chance to win. What do you make of this strange stone? A carving of a cockerel? Yes, it was strapped to my father's journal. Do you think it could have something to do with the previous excavation? Possibly, though I'm not aware of the motif having any meaning around these parts. Is this your glove? I've been looking all over for that. Where did you find it? In the alley behind the plow and furrow on the night of my arrival. Were you there? As I say, I've been bedbound for several days, Miss Bateman. How odd. Can I please have it back? Here. Thank you.
If you were bedbound, why was your glove we outside of the... We the same pod, Miss Bateman. I knew you wouldn't be frightened by a few old stories. It will be interesting to see what those lads found in there. Certainly. Thank you so very much for responding to my letter and for coming here. We have some great discoveries to make, you and I. I sincerely hope so. And the chance to follow in your father's footsteps. Right, time for me to shift these old bones. I'm to take me a spot of the plow and furrow. I'll be there all night should you need me assistance. Thank you, Mr. Shoulder. I'm sorry again for giving you the runaround. I promise I am not beyond redemption. I won't let you down again. See you soon. Chat, he's sus because I'm starting to wonder if Mr. Shoulder even existed. Because we found his glove outside the back of the bar and he was hauling ass back to his house. He wasn't sick with a fever. He is he dropped his glove. He is goddamn lying. Something sus is going on with this guy. Something very, very, very sus. And I'm gonna find out what the hell it is. The day was starting to test me. The word coincidence felt insufficient to explain what was happening. I know what to, how to, I know what word to explain what's happening. Sus. It was after that first conversation with Leonard's shoulder that I started entertaining thoughts of a truly irrational nature. What if my dream wasn't just a dream? What if it was all more than simple coincidence? What if that thing really could help my father? Good day, little one. Hello. What's this, a fiddle bow? There's no string. My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Don't be shy. I don't mean you any harm. Creepy little girl. What are you doing out here all alone on the moors? Do you live here? Hmm. I haven't Would seen you like her me before. to fix your bow so you can play your fiddle again? Yes? Most peculiar. Perhaps I can mend the bow for her. If memories of my childhood violin lessons serve me right, bowstring is made from animal hair coated in a waxy resin. The strings don't vibrate without it. Hmm. Waxy resin? I have that. I need a string, though. I should apply this to the string first. A string. I know where to find a string. Well, apparently, I never mind. I thought I did. I haven't seen a horse yet to get a horse hair. Actually, maybe we could... Maybe the goat could have a long enough hair for me to do that on. Hmm. He does have a... a no, not him. Oops, wrong one. Hello, sir. No questions. 
I'm not interested. But wow, you. you're rude, sir. Very rude. Let's cut off some hair of the goat. Goat hair is much too coarse to be used for bowstring. Well, fine then. Um. Maybe cat hair? Wouldn't be long enough though. Horse! Just appeared out of nowhere. Cut the horse hair. Hmm. Horse hair would make fine bowstring. You're gonna get kicked. <laughs> she almost took my head off. That's not mine to take. The horse has been provided with some drinking water. Hmm. Horse probably wants something to eat. I don't wish to lose an eye. I'll have to gain her trust. I'd rather not go into those horrible toilets again. Hmm. Maybe a sugar cube? the hell are you? Hello there. Yes. My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Ted. Ted Cross. Pleased to meet you. Likewise. Are you a local, Mr. Cross? Oh, no. I'm just passing through. I'm a musician. Just myself, me guitar and me horse. Are you a traveling musician? Aye. I've been playing a new song tonight. I've just finished the lyrics. What's it about? You'll have to come listen. Is that your horse stationed in the alley? Aye. Thistlecrack is her name. <laughs> That's an unusual name for a horse. Aye. It were what she were called when I bought her. Glutton would be a better name. She likes her treats. But it feels wrong to change it. When they forget to shave down there, you get a bad case of Thistlecrack. What do you make of Bewley? Can't say that I know much about this place. I don't usually travel this far south. I see. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? Can't say I have, miss. What is it? Never mind. Thank you for your time. Make sure you watch my performance later, won't you? I'll try. Maybe. We'll see. Hello again, Mr. Shoulder. Sorry, mid-drink. Mr. Spearman. I've still not been able to gain permission to excavate from Mr. Bryden. Is that so? Perhaps you could show him something that might change his mind. What else can you tell me about this sax knot? Try not to worry yourself too much with these old stories. Leave those to the locals, Miss Bateman. Have others spoken of goblins appearing in their dreams? A dream is a dream, that is all. They merely make for good stories. I know, I know. But to answer your question, no, not to my knowledge. I left two hours ago, and to pick up kiddos from school, we're still looking for Hobbs Barrow. Yes, they are really making us. Well, we found it, but we have to get permission to excavate it. We've learned a lot more about it since then. Tell me about yourself, Mister Shoulder. I'm sure the locals have filled you in already, lass. You cut quite the mysterious figure. Most had little to say. It's true. I do tend to keep me head down. When one gets to my age, one grows very comfortable in one's home. I like the isolation of the moors. I wouldn't change it for anything. I take it you don't get many visitors? Oh, no. Nobody bothers me. That's the perk of living so far out, huh? Just me and me hens. I used to come into Bewley more often, back before me health went to buggery. What do you think of Bewley? Whilst one could consider the villagers to be rather unenlightened, this place has its charm. The market's in town today. You can see that folk want for now, dear. What do you make of Lord Panswick? His lordship is an important man in Bewley, as I'm sure you have gathered. His family has commanded much respect here for many generations. 
Do you respect him as a leader? I do. He wants the best for the village. Without his influence, the railway line would have never come through here. Does he want more visitors? Aye, I believe so. He has great ambitions for Beaulieu and wants to share them with the world. Ah, uh, where's the horror? This is one of those slow burn horror games where they just... There's a lot of mystery solving for a very long portion of it, and then towards the end, you start getting to the weird stuff. The, like, this ain't right kind of stuff. Is there anything else I should know about Hobbs Barrow, Mr. Shoulder? No, lass. I'm certain we will know a lot more about it by this time tomorrow. I hope so. What else can you tell me about the previous excavation? I think I covered it earlier, Miss Bateman. As you yourself said, it were a time of superstitious hysteria. What was it like living in that period of hysteria? I kept to myself. It didn't really affect me. My hens stayed healthy and their eggs kept me well fed. If one can keep a level head in such situations, one can get by. Indeed. Is there anything else I should be aware of before my own excavation? No other ghouls I should be worried about? Ah, you know the answer to that. The corruption in that soil were all in the minds of men. Does a, a hen lays one egg a day, right? On average? What do you make of Mildred Walker? Who? I believe she's also known as Mother Mildred. Oh, we used to get about when we were children. Our paths have not crossed in a long while. Depends on the hen and what breed it is. So it's like one, one egg every one to two days on average, probably. I've still not been able to. Yes, I've still not. Yes, what do you think of Charles Bryden? He is a decent man. It must have been hard for him after that terrible business with his brother. Without a doubt. I must say I had assumed you had at least spoken to him about my visit. Sorry, lass. I had no intention of giving you the runaround. Again, I can only apologize. What are Lord Panswick's plans for Beaulieu? He's rebuilding an old chapel on his estate. He seeks to bring God back to these lands. But what of St. Edmunds? I think Father Roach might argue God has never left. Indeed. Let's leave such arguments to them, shall we? If you don't mind me asking, what is the nature of your ongoing illness? Oh, just the ravages of age. Getting off this bench will be a small battle in itself. Something you won't need to worry about for many a year, Miss Bateman. Growing old is a blessing and a curse. And what of your recent fever? An ordeal, it were. So much tossing and turning. But I'm right as rain now, especially after a mug of ale. And don't worry about me. Thank you for your time. Hi, Miss Bateman. We Thank will speak you. more later. Alright, to do. We need to fix the fiddle. We have to get... Now we know the horse's name. Maybe just t tell it the horse's name. I don't wish to lose an eye. I'll have to gain her trust. Or I have to find some food to feed the horse. Um... Explore Boulay and the surrounding area. Where have I not gone today? Hmm. Oh, you're you're right, chat. We could also kill the horse. <laughs> Hello, Wally. Go away! You gave the door back to my sister. It wasn't very nice of you to bury her favorite toy, Wally. I gave it to the fair folk, and you stole it back from them. You don't really believe in fairies, do you? You're old enough to know better. They're real, and thanks to you, I'm cursed. There's no such thing as curses either, Wally. Go away. This kid is very annoying and very rude. Hello, Wally. Go away. I don't want to talk to you. Go away. I don't want to talk to you. You want a knife? I don't wish to give that away. 
damn. Damn, I tried. Let's try going towards the barrow today. AR. I must gain Mr. Bryden's permission to excavate. Hmm. This is the barrow here. Gotta figure out how, how to get him to let me go in there. I'm not sure what... Hmm. I'm not sure what... What do you make of this stone, Mr. Bryden? It was strapped to my father's journal. Wait a minute. Let me see that. By God. Wait here a moment. I need to get something from inside. I waited for what felt like an age. I now realize that Mr. Bryden must have been in a great debate with himself, wondering whether or not to share his own piece of the mystery with me. The goat stared at me, seemingly in pity as I stood there in that rolling fog. Finally, Mr. Bryden emerged. Now then, as far as I know, what I have here is the only thing that Samuel brought back from Barra. Take a look. A snake. Incredible, a pear. That's been in my drawer ever since Samuel passed. I suppose it might be important, so I kept it safe. Fate is clearly playing a part in your arrival, lass. Please, Mr. Bryden, allow me to excavate Hobbs Barrow, a place that is no more than dirt and stone. <sighs> You're not gonna give up, are you, lass? No! I'm not. Samuel managed to say one thing about those men that helped him. I think it's time I tell you. Yes? He stuttered out that one of those fellows could barely walk after they got out of there. Tongue-tied too, the man were. My father. You what? My father. My he father. He had an accident around 25 years ago that left him bedbound and unable to talk. Aye, could be him. My mother told me it happened in a horse riding accident. Samuel boarded up that barra for a reason. Something unnatural occurred, I know it. Mr. Bryden, we must rely on our rational faculties to explain any. Promise me you'll be careful. Any sign of trouble, leave without hesitation, and we board that accursed place up again. Understood? Wait, you're giving me permission to excavate? <sighs> Aye, against me better judgment. Woo! I don't have the energy to stop you, lass. Thank you so much. I am grateful. Don't make me regret my decision. Take Samuel's stone. Are you sure? Finally. Aye, give it back to me when you're finished, though. I promise. Thank you. I'll be sure to show you my discoveries, Mr. Bryden. I'd rather you don't. Now then, I've got things to get on with. I don't suppose you can spare any labor to help me with the dig? Don't push your luck, lass. Market's on today. Plenty of able-bodied men about. Ta-ra now. Permission like granted. I finally had permission to excavate Hobbs Barrow. As exciting as that was, I was distracted by what Mr. Bryden said of his brother's associate. There was no doubt in my mind that father was the stricken man he spoke of. You told me he was crippled after coming off his horse. Why did you lie to me? To protect me, to stop me from following in his footsteps, you failed. And so did Charles Bryden. He should have said no. He should have said, why? What happened? He should have never given me that stone. What happens? Uh, thank you, Mighty Free, Sambi, uh, Raza Ghoul, Cheap Shot, Shady Fridge, uh, Gorguts. Thank you for those resubs, guys. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. So we're one step closer to finally getting into the damn barrel and saying what the hell's in there. 
I want to see the horrifying horrors we're going to discover in there. Hello, ma'am. Good day. Fresh produce. What have you got for sale? I'm selling meat, vegetables, and all sorts of herbs and things. You're welcome to have a gander. I'll be sure to browse. Goodbye. Ta-ra, miss. I would like some vegetables for the horse. Not tempting. I'm not hungry. Tins of corned beef. Ghastly. Ugh. Herbs, though. She is selling various herbs. Some familiar looking, some not. The box is full of various sprouts and onions. Nothing particularly tempting. Good day. Freshly picked apples, miss. Would you like to try one on the Apple. Apples. Yes, please. Here you are, miss. Thank you. The apple looks somewhat rotten. It's riddled with holes. Wait, what? The apple looks somewhat rotten. It's riddled with holes. Why is it? I can't give that to the horse. He'll shit all over me. <laughs> Good day. How did you like your apple? I'm afraid it is rather rotten, sir. Hey, up. That slander, that is. Don't you be going around telling folk I'm handing out rotten apples. Sir, it's rotted. I don't wish to give that away. Can I interest you in a pie? Finest mutton in all the county. Two pence each. No, thank you. You're missing out. Fresh Scotch eggs. Do you happen to have any um, chicken pot pie? Because that we'll be talking then. Hello, Miss Tompkins. Hello. We weren't introduced earlier. My name is Thomasina. Mom? Chat, uh, what's in a scotch egg? I, I know it's like like an egg with like some sort of something wrapped around it, but what, what is actually in it? But I've seen them before. I don't know what's in there. It's an egg surrounded by sausage. <gasps> sausage! An egg covered in sausage? That sounds amazing. How do you fare, Miss Tompkins? I'm waiting for Mr. Ambrose. Have you seen him? Who's that? The milkman. Ms. Fenchurch will be ever so close if I've no milk for his lordship. I'm afraid I haven't seen him. Whose Discord was that? You are in the employ of Lord Panswick. Aye. He employs half a bullion one way or another. I'm in need of some help for my excavation. Do you think his lordship could lend me some of his laborers? Maybe. Might you introduce me to him? Sorry, ma'am, but his lordship doesn't take visitors. Any road, I must wait here for Mr. Ambrose. Ms. Fenchurch will be ever so cross if I've no milk for his lordship. If Mr. Ambrose doesn't turn up and I find you some milk, would you be able to introduce me to Lord Panswick? Hmm. His lordship really doesn't like visitors, ma'am. I'll take the risk. Miss Fenchurch will be cross with me. But she'll be even crosser if I come back without fresh milk. So do True. we have a deal? Aye. Bring me some milk and I'll take you to his lordship. Thank you. But hopefully Mr. Ambrose will arrive soon. His lordship's discord, yes. Well, the go there was goat milk chat, but the goat milk was rotted and sour so i don't know if that will work it might have you been waiting long for mr ambrose aye he should have been here a good two hour ago he's here every market day you see he sells only the freshest milk miss fenchurch swears by it i hope miss fortune hasn't befallen him on his way here i'm sure he will turn up oh i hope so are you familiar with hobbs barrow What's that? Never mind. What do you make of these stones? Oh, gives me the creeps. Why? Creep, you said? Just a feeling. 
Who is Ms. Fenchurch? Is Lordship's housekeeper. I'll let you know if I find some fresh milk. Thank you, ma'am. But tell me if you see Mr. Ambrose, won't you? I will. Good day. Hey up. Hey up. What do you make of these stones? Don't look like out to me. Uh, thank you, Gorgats, for the resub and Shady Fridge. Thank you for very much. I met a girl at the Devil's Toe. She gave me this broken fiddle bow. Ah, well, you've experienced the local folklore firsthand, then, lass. Hmm. I'm Scottish, so some of the wording is funny. We say I all the time. I. Every uh, place in the world just has like their unique things they like to say all the time that is weird to other people who don't live there, but to people that live there, it's perfectly normal. Do you have any fresh milk going spare? I'm a blacksmith, not a cattle farmer. Quite. Does the name Saxnot mean anything to you? It never does not. It. What is it? Hmm, never mind. Thanks for your time. Aye, speak to you later. Horror where I went away for two hours and still no horror? There's been tons of horror. It's just not jump scares and it's this is very atmospheric subtle horror where they're slowly building up to a mystery at the end uh far too many games are the you know they translate better to twitch which is like jump scares gore blots running you know that kind of stuff that's that's more of the easy horror to do this kind of horror is much harder because you have to set atmosphere with very little just enough, just to like give you like a, a taste, a drop, to the point where you're like, maybe there isn't anything weird with this barrel. Like you still have that hope. And then you finally get to the end of the breadcrumbs and then you, that's when you start seeing the weird stuff. Good day. Do you know anything about this stone? C-A-Z. I haven't a clue. Kaz. Perhaps it's an old folk trinket or a talisman of some kind. Hello again. Yes. Do you have any fresh milk going spare? No, sorry. Not to worry. Farewell. Kim Hollywood's asked this old lady for some milk. Well, I know that the farm has some milk, but will it work? I wonder. Gonna be weird. I should ask Mr. Bryden for permission before attempting to milk his goat. <laughs> I don't think he'll mind. What do you want? Do you have any fresh milk going spare? <laughs> If you can get any milk out of old Eunice, you're welcome to it. Eunice? Eunice? Oh, God. My goat. Good luck. So I have to milk a goat. Oh, great. Here, Eunice. Here, lovely, lovely Eunice. Do you want an apple? Hey, girl. Would you like an apple? Now a goat won't care about a rotten apple. The grumpy thing isn't interested. Um. Well, shit. Um. Try just milking it. All right. We are doing this. Come on, let me milk you. What the fuck? There's your damn horror chat. Like, see, it's a little shit like that, just out of nowhere. I, I, I'm not sure what that was. That was a. I don't know what's happening to me. All this superstitious nonsense must be getting to my head. <laughs> uh, the goat looked evil. I'm not going near that thing again. 
The empty bucket smells of rancid milk. Uh, I'm not going near that. Th we're, we're, we're not going to milk the goat? Then how am I going to get milk? Oh, I, I, my camera was blocking it, but the goat was solid black, standing there evil, and had purple glowing eyes. That's all I was doing. It was like, I'll enter, I was blocking and entertain it for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's basically what it was like. Right, let's go. Oh. I should ask Mr. Bryden if he could milk the goat for me. <laughs> okay. Huh. Well, did you get any milk out of her? I tried and failed miserably. <laughs> uh, she's a temperamental beast. Perhaps you could milk her for me? I'd like to help you, lass, but I've just had a flare up in me joints. I've worked myself too hard this morning. I couldn't bend down to save myself. Is there anything I can do to help? Ah, my wife would say I'm beyond any help. I'm certain of that. But if you know of any remedies for aching joints, please send them my way. I can go the way to do, Mr. Bryden. I'm going to rest for a while. Ta ra now. All right, that means I gotta go to the witch. Uh, the horror part of that scene wasn't really the goat. It was the uh, the guy hanging from the tree. That was the real creepy thing. Which would be his dead brother. Flashback. Daddy, I have something for you. I do hope you remember it. I've taken great care of it. I'll fetch it for you now, all right. Is it the vase? <coughs> Daddy, you must remember this. The day that started it all. It's the red urn you buried in the garden for me. My first ever excavation. Hmm. Where should I put it? Mother took away all the knickknacks that used to sit on these shelves. The pot might look nicer a little closer to the light anyway. How about up there? Perfect. It will catch the light from your lamp so nicely. There. I'm going to become a great barrow digger just like you. I hope the pot reminds you of those adventures we had together when I was a child, and how thankful I am for everything you've taught me. I can't believe he gave his oh, little I must girl tell pot. You about my visit to Pallinghurst. I found an arrowhead. Good day. Yes? Do you know of any remedies for aching joints? You're too young to be suffering from this, surely. It's for someone else, Mr. Bryden. Yes, yes. I know just the poultice. Capital. May I Capital. have some? Capital. Well, I don't have the ingredients, I'm afraid. What do you need to make Now it? I have to go gather them, don't I? It's a simple I? blend made of natural elements. Elderflower and flirtwort. I can make the poultice for you if you bring me these things. Then it just needs to be applied directly to the joints. That should ease his burden. Thank you. Where can I find some elderflower? There used to be quite a few elder plants growing here in Hearn Wood, but they've long since gone. Nowadays, you might find the shrub growing within a hedgerow or a private garden. I see. What does elderflower look like? Elderflowers are small white and growing clumps on the elder shrub. Elder shrubs can grow in all shapes and sizes. Just look out for the clumps of tiny white flowers. Well, I know the white flowers are, but the flirt wood's Farewell. gonna be annoying. Hmm. Squirrel! I 
I'm not sure what that... This looks like it might be elderflower. I'll take some. Now, flirtwort is going to be the tough one. Where have I seen a private garden? Actually, in front of the church, I think. Excuse me, Miss Bateman. I'm in something of a hurry. Farewell. God knows when we shall meet again. Which work is that quote from? Romeo I don't know. Juliet. Oh, he's gone. I don't know, sir. Where have I seen flirtwort? He seems mad at me. I don't know why. Whatever it is, it's not my fault. I'm not going near you, evil goat. Wait a minute, the town might have some. This looks like elderflower to me. This looks like el Good day. Fresh produce. Do you have any milk for sale? Not today, sorry. Goodbye. Ta-ra, miss. I can't think of anything else. Oh, I don't, I need a... Uh... This looks like elder. I already have elderflower. I need, um, flirtwort. Hello. Good day. Do you have any milk for me, ma'am? Not yet, miss. Oh, dear. no sign of miss. I'm afraid. Have I seen flirtwort? said private garden or a head shrub I'm trying to think if I've seen or heard of any like private The window box is well out of reach. These flowers look pretty. Someone must take good care of them. The window box is... The window box? Hmm. You found old le... Yes, finally. Goodbye. See you... Sugar cubes. Oh... Of course we'll like that. Hello again, Mr. Shoulder. Miss Behrman. Mr. Bryden has given me permission to excavate Hobbs Barrow. Marvelous. I'm sorry you've had to sort all this out in my absence. When do we start? Tomorrow, I hope. But first I need to recruit some locals to assist with the dig. It's too much work for me to do on my own. I see. Beaulieu has its fair share of strapping young lads. You'll find assistance, Miss Bateman. Thank you for your time. Aye, Miss Bateman. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Alright, let's go to the horse. Give him a sugar cube. Here you go. Eat this. Good girl. Hopefully that's gained some trust between us. Now let's get the horse hair. I've managed to cut off a few lengthy strands. Now I put, rub this on there. Thank you. 
there we are. This should make sufficient bowstring now. Now put that on the bow thing. I've done it. The bowstring seems to hold on sufficiently. Now watch you get kicked in the face by the horse. Look what I have for you. Thank you, East Rice, for the uh, follow. Welcome to our community. Oh, wow. Steam Mannheim Steamroller over here. Wait, what? just happened my head is spinning what happened hello where did she go the girl left her fiddle behind that I'll was no girl in case I see her again I want to understand what just happened you still have your wallet? Make sure you have both kidneys too. That's how they get you. Day. Yes. Where can I find some flirtwort? Flirtwort is not commonly found around Bewley. It's a perennial shrub that bears small white flowers. You might find some growing out on moors if you're lucky. Thank you. On the boat. I have some. Show me. No, no, this is not elderflower. It's cowbane. An easy mistake to make. The two look very similar. Oh. It's safe to eat, as long as you're not a cow. Very toxic to cattle. Where can I find some elderflower? There used to be quite a few elder plants growing here in Hearn Wood, but they've long since gone. Nowadays, you might find the shrub growing within a hedgerow or a private garden. I see. What does elderflower look like? Elderflowers are small, white, and growing clumps on the elder shrub. Elder shrubs can grow in all shapes and sizes. Just look out for the clumps of tiny white flowers. Farewell. Well, I thought I had it, but apparently I have nothing. This cowbane certainly looks a lot like elderflower. So let me not feed that to a cow, because that would kill it. I've no use for the cowbane. Well, I guess we'll explore random parts of the marrow and try to find uh, where it grows. Maybe it's more over this way? No, how about... Good day. Fresh prod. Is that elderflower you're selling? Aye, perfect for teas and tinctures. Any good for sore joints? Aye. Penny a bunch. I'm afraid I don't have any money. Sorry, miss. Does it look like I'm running a charity? Can we work something out? A trade, perhaps? I deal in cash only, miss. 
No coin. No elderflower. What'd you take me for? Goodbye. Ta-ra, miss. Well, that's annoying. I can't just steal the elderflower. There must be another way of getting my hands on it. Hello, Jane. Miss, watch me juggle. Very impressive. Very impressive. I can juggle even more apples. Here, you want a rotten one? I dare you to juggle an extra apple. Easy. Told you I could do it. Here's your apple back. I'm very impressed. Well, that's 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 impressive. I'm I'm impressed. Good job. The apple looks somewhat rotten. Day. Freshly p selling them out of steel. Would miss like to buy some. No, thank you. I have no money. Perhaps you'd be more interested. Freshly made, just one penny each. No, thank you. One penny for a scotch egg is a pretty damn good deal. The window box is well out of reach. Maybe if I look out my window, I can see some. No, it's not interactable, unfortunately. Hmm. Do you have any fresh milk going spare? Sorry, lass. I've none at all. Never mind. Does the name Saxnot mean anything to you? No, I can't say it does. Hmm, goodbye. See you soon. Hmm. I certainly don't wish to touch it. Oh, there's poop there. Fresh and steamy. Delightful. I believe a horse to be the culprit. Ah, oh, big old pile of shit. I shan't be dragging any of my possessions through that mess. Why not? She's being far too the picky. The road disappears over the horizon. I see nothing but moorland. Well, I think I need a hint as to where to find this damn flower. The church seems to have stuff. So let's go to the church. Good. Fresh wood. No. Good day to you, pet. Hello, Mrs. DePlancy. If you're looking for Father Roach, he won't be back until tomorrow. Where is Father Roach? You might have noticed the good father has a green thumb. He's gone to visit his friend in the countryside to purchase some seedlings for his tower garden. Where is Father Roach's tower garden? Why, on top of St. Edmund's, of course. He's got a lovely collection of cuttings up there. You'll have to ask him to show you. It does sound rather pleasant. It's a shame he's not around. Well, he does have a spare key for the tower door somewhere. Really? Do you know where Father Roach keeps his spare key? No, that's his business. If I did know, I'd fetch it myself and take you up there. Not to worry. 
I do recall him saying he hid it outside somewhere. For safekeeping, like. Were it in the graveyard? Oh, I don't know. Best wait till he gets back, pet. Let's dig up the fresh grave, then. These box pews are most unusual. I've never seen any quite so tall. We Beulie folk like our privacy. Many of the pews are owned by individual families. Some might accuse you of hiding secrets. Now, now, pet. I jest. At my age, it's hard to climb in and out of them. I'd rather stand. What do you make of these stones? They are not Christian. I'm certain of that. I agree. Much older, I feel. Older than Christianity? Oh, the youth of today. Uh, yeah. It's kind of a new religion, ma'am. Does the name Saxnot mean anything to you? Hmm. Is that a village near Erdlaw? No, never mind. <laughs> that couldn't be older than Christianity. <laughs> I found out my father visited Bewley some 25 years ago. William Bateman, perhaps you remember him? Bateman? William Bateman? I remember a William Baldwin. He were a right miserable sod. My father was only in Bewley briefly, from what I understand. I'm trying to piece together what he was doing here. You'll have to ask him. I don't recall anyone of that name. Do you have any fresh milk going spare? I don't, pet. Not to worry. My father took part in an excavation at Hobbs Barrow. Do you recall the excavation? I concern myself only with matters related to the church. I'm sorry I can't be more helpful. Thanks for your time. Lord be with you. Thanks, ma'am. This must belong to Mrs. De Plancy. That's not mine to interfere with. Well, I mean, let's just take it anyways, though. Now, if it's outside, in the graveyard, it's probably here. in here. I may be a barrow digger. This appears to be a recently dug, unmarked grave. This appears to... Hmm. The fiddle and bow, left to me by the young girl at the devil's toe. No, that won't... Headstone... William Paxton, modest and... This appears. I may be a barrow. I said something about the graveyard, but I don't see anything in the graveyard. John Purchase. Dearly beloved husband of Florence. Here lies Margaret Tillett, beloved mother, wife, and sister. Today she dances with angels. Wait a minute. In memory of Romeo Hegg, dearly missed by his beloved Juliet. Romeo and Juliet, Shakespeare. I think I can chip away at this plaster. The plaster is thicker than it looks. The trowel is too blunt. We'll try the chisel. I think I can chip away. There's a key behind here. This has to be Father Roach's spare. Ah. All this just to get the key to the damn uh, garden. Oh, adventure games. Let's see what's Capital. upstairs. Now I should be able to get my herbs from his little garden up here. I'll just steal those too. And I see white flowers. A small label on the pot reads 
flirt wart. This is just what I need. Well, go ahead and cut some. I could just pick this up. I could just... This is just what I need. This is just what I need. I still need elderflower. I should put the key back. There. I hope that stays on. Okay, let's... So we need to steal... Tins of corn... Hello, Jane. Miss, watch me juggle. Very impressive. I can juggle even more apples. Oh, I need, uh, okay, so. Where did the worm go? I need to go back and get another worm. I shall name you Kenneth the Second. Okay, the answer to this puzzle is really dumb, but I need to put the worm in the apple. The worm has found a new home within the holes of the rotten apple. I have to go back. Have her juggle. I dare you to juggle an extra apple. Easy. Yuck, a worm. <laughs> Put those back. Oh, uh, sorry. Swap them. Oh, damn. I gotta swap instead of pick them all up. Okay. Uh, okay, so give her the apple. I dare you to juggle an extra apple. Easy. Yuck, a worm. <laughs> and then swap them out. <laughs> very. Sometimes pulp adventure games are very illogical. I managed solutions. to swap them without her noticing. And it's just like, what? Really? You're supposed to come up with that? Molten uh. pies! That was one of those uh, moon logic puzzles late. Like, okay. Good day. Moon logic. I have the ingredients you asked for. Wonderful. Hand them over. There you go. Tell Mr. Bryden to apply this poultice to the area in question. It works wonders. Thank you very much. Now we go back to his farm. Yes? I've got a poultice for your joints, Mr. Bryden. It was prepared by Mildred Walker. <coughs> Who? You may know her as Mother Mildred. Oh, thank you, lass. That Mildred knows what she's doing. I should have thought to see her myself. She said to apply it directly to where the pain is. It should work very swiftly. I'll give it a try. It should work fast enough for you to help me solve this puzzle. Oh, that did the trick, lass. 
I feel like a lad of twenty again. I suppose you'll be wanting me to milk old Eunice for you in return. Yes. If you don't mind, I'd appreciate it. A fair exchange? Stand well back, lass. Believe me, I'm not coming an inch closer. Come on, Eunice. That's a good girl. There you are, lass. Some fresh milk. Thank you very much, Mr. Bryden. All right, now we can go give the lady the fresh milk. I've got a pail of fresh milk here for you, Miss Tompkins. You haven't. Here. Mom, you've saved my hide. Thank you. Are you all right? I'm worried about Mr. Ambrose. But any road, I'm heading back to Panswick Manor now. Would you still like to meet his lordship? Very much so. Now, I can't guarantee you'll be home all right. He's a very busy man. I'll take my chances. Follow me, then. <sighs> Is raw milk illegal? Well, it ha if you're selling, it has Go to be pasteurized. Over. It's so. not much further. You can drink raw milk. Time to call this. Sorry, ma'am. Give it here then. <laughs> what the hell is this muck? Goat milk, ma'am. You daft bint. Since when does his lordship take goat's milk with his tea? Oh, he will not be pleased. Get back to your sweeping before I clip you over the head. Sorry, ma'am. She's rude. Hello there. Bugger off, you whelp. This is private land. Miss Fenchurch is a cruel looking woman, her face set in a permanent scowl. Is she sweeping the dirt path? Is. Okay. Where is Lord Panswick? Sorry, ma'am. I can't talk. Miss Fenchurch is ever so mad at me. Um. Some fine looking flowers. Some fine looking. Hmm. Carving. It's a symbol of some kind. A moon, perhaps? That is well out of my reach. Um. Do you want a fiddle? I'm not sure they would be interested. I was wondering if it might be possible to speak with Lord Panswick. Are you deaf, girl? Don't make me fetch the guards. They're armed, you know. What is your problem? By Christ, you're like a dog with a bone. Do you want to get yourself shot? I can assure you the only things getting shot around here are the pheasant. And perhaps the odd grouse. <laughs> Greetings, my lady. Lord James Panswick, at your disposal. I knew it! You're Lord Panswick? As I live and breathe. You could have told me that before. What is life without mystery, Miss Bateman? A predictable stagger to the grave? I was imagining someone... Much older and far less handsome? Yes, to be frank. <laughs> See? I can read your mind, my dear. Now, may I ask, what brings you to my manor? I wanted to ask if I could borrow some of your labourers. Oh? For what purpose? I intend to excavate Hobbs Barrow tomorrow, and I'm in need of some assistance. An excavation? How very delightful. 
we're in the middle of our own works right this minute. Follow me, Miss Bateman. Come along. I promise I don't bite. That's right, he's building something to the gods. Or a god. For generations, this chapel was a place of unique devotion. And this was until some of my more ungrateful ancestors forgot him and abandoned it. Why did they abandon it? Men of great wealth and power can grow so comfortable that they forget they still need the divine. The sacrifices required to maintain such a relationship were no longer being made. The chapel soon turned to rubble, and with time, even the villagers forgot him. His influence endured, but only with the isolated few who lived on the very fringes of these moors. Believe it or not, my family's fortunes have dwindled ever since. Since I succeeded my father, it has become my life's work to restore this place of worship. With this sacred place rebuilt, he shall be venerated once more, and the name Panswick shall be uttered again across all of England. He guided the hands of my ancestors. Now it is time for him to guide us. Bewley is a godless place. Something tells Have me it's isn't the Christian God. Father Roach might disagree. <laughs> I shall bring him back to these lands, and this chapel shall be his seat once again. A new world. A new but world. it seems like you wish to bring back the past. From out of the old world shall come the new. A greater truth. But I digress. Horace, my dear fellow. Aye, your lordship. This fair lady here is in need of some assistance. Would you and your chaps be up for a spot of digging at Hobbs Barrow tomorrow? Hobbs Barrow. Ah, your lordship, tis no bother. Good man. You're in luck, my dear. These are my finest. They're all yours. Thank well, you. that was easy. I am grateful. That's um, sus. One condition. Yes? I've heard wonders about Mary de Plancy's Bakewell puddings. I'd rather like to try them for myself. Your lordship, you're giving me the help of your men in exchange for cakes. Yes. But Farewell, my beauty. Well, I, that's a good Wait. deal. Alright, I gotta take a quick break, guys. We'll be right back in just a few minutes.